There you go. Wrong level! <clears throat> Welcome back to Felfair Manor Tales. Last we left off, you guys had your very first ghost experience. Well, well two of very first. Two of us. Two of us. Yep. Only two of you. Well, your very first, um, shall we say, certain ghost experience. There was a presence in the chapel, and you spoke to it using the spirit phone. Well, yes, I suppose. Spirit box is the more proper term, I suppose, but Shh, no. I don't know. I don't ghost hunt. I'm the rightest in the world. Shh. Banana phone. <clears throat> anyway. Banana phone. We are going to rejoin this adventure the next, uh, the following morning. When all of you have had time to sleep through the night, well, some more than others, and you reawaken to a lovely sunny day outside. It's a little bit hotter today than it, uh, than it has been all week, which is nice, especially following that dreadfully wet winter. Proceed. I mean, uh, considering uh, the, um, fuck, who was it? Father, uh, McDougal and... David? Yeah, David and, um... Right, Dr. Celeste. Celeste. Yeah, it, it's actually written there, but... <laughs> it is. Eh, fuck it. The painkillers are starting to work, so that's good. Anyway. Who, know, who since, knows how to read? Since Celeste and David met the ghost, I kind of want to know what they did right after. Indeed. Well, the, the, uh... As far as, actually, Dr. Celeste, Father David Mac uh, McDougall, what did you do after meeting the ghost? Oh, I, I thought we already went over that. David had gone up and he had, you know, done his nightly rituals. And as he, you know, you know prayed for the priest in the chapel and... I believe uh, the, ghost, the ghost cat reappeared. Yeah, the ghost cat reappeared and it settled upon him as he slept. I don't remember. He used that. to slumber. And uh, Father David fell asleep thinking about ways he could uh, he could cozy up the you know, the place for the cat. So he's gonna use one of the sweaters to make a cat bed. And it was super adorable. <clears throat> and Doctor Celeste, what did you do? Uh, Dr. Celeste probably went back to her room with the, probably listened to the recording a couple times from what they've made just to make sure that it's stuck in her mind, I suppose. Because she nice. was excited. I mean, obviously, it, it's going to be very hard for her to sleep since she's, you know, had a ghost encounter. Exactly, the first ver uh, verifiable proof that she's gotten through her entire career, more or less. More or less, and so she's just super excited about it. As she listens through the recording, she will start remembering things. She'll start remembering how whenever, she, uh, whenever someone would turn up with a recording like it, they would be accused of fraudulence because a spirit box is more or less just a broken police scanner. It'll right. scan the airwaves and sometimes will snatch little words and phrases out of radio stations going on, and that's what people always explain it with. It sticks out in your mind and nags at you. Can you really be certain that what you had in that chapel was an actual encounter? Which is why it will be followed up with more research into the chapel. Into the chapel! You should go in there with a ghostometer. Or a ghostometer. <laughs> whatever you want to pronounce it. Exactly. You can probably ask Raymond to... Uh... To buy order the, one online. Buy one. <laughs> the ghost, the ghost rectal thermometer. Ghost, the ghost o meter. <laughs> the ghost o meter. Anyway. Yeah, but no. we rejoin 
We rejoined yeah. the manor in the morning. With Father McDavid, uh, McDavid McDougal. <clears throat> with Father David <laughs> McDougal has gotten a surprisingly restful sleep. He still feels his legs a little warmer, and it's, and he can almost see it small and uh, indent in his cover where this mysterious animal had apparently been sleeping. There's no trace of it as he wakes up, however. Meanwhile, Dr. Celeste LeBlanc hardly got any sleep at all, and I halfway expect her to having studied and written and researched through the night. Either way, you are both roused from your room by the sounds of people starting to get up and the wonderful smell of coffee. The telltale sign of Miguel being in the, uh, in the kitchen. What time is it? It is around 8 in the morning. Ooh. There's, there's an 8 in the morning? That's awfully early. Well, mm -hmm. That's awfully oh. late. There we go. <laughs> to be fair, you were out very late. So it stands to reason that you uh, that you slept in. Yeah. He will get up and he will get dressed. There you are. There's your token. And yeah. Celeste will drag herself out of bed at the smell of coffee. <laughs> and at least put on something at least decent to walk around in the house in <laughs> for the moment. Before I'm assuming she has to go do her job and do her lectures for the day. <laughs> that is entirely up to you. I You're mean, standing there with actual ghost evidence between your hands. Perhaps you could call in sick? Well, I had planned to meet uh, Dr. Richard Graves anyway, so I might as well just go do my job. There you go. But As you go ahead. Yeah. Oh, it's fine. Uh, right. No, I'm going to basically go down in my pajamas for coffee. As you enter the kitchen, you see Father David McDougal in there and Miguel, indeed, making coffee. He's already prepared a few, uh, a few cups of it on the counter. <laughs> and as you enter, he gives you a curt little nod. And almost seems to expect you to just take a cup. <laughs> I feel so oh bad. god. Gracias, Miguel. And I will take a cup <laughs> of coffee. Oh. He mumbles something non committal under his voice. It appears he hasn't had his own coffee yet. Did he just steal his what coffee? Else? They <laughs> <laughs> I just took a cup of coffee. They weren't labeled. Like from his hands? That would be funny. Yes. No, the one. Uh, no, I would just they steal were... his coffee. They were standing on the counter. He's he's making coffee for pretty much anyone who's uh, who's awake this early. Fair enough. Buenos dias, uh, Miguel. <laughs> I just I just thought it would be funny just standing there with a, with a cup of coffee and someone just takes it. Oh, thank you, Miguel. I love coffee. Uh, that is that is a Raymond Shafter move. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, as, Father, as Father David McDougal says, good morning to Miguel. <laughs> he holds for a moment. There is a small silence. And then he turns and actually gives Father David a smile. Buenos dias, senor. Oh, oh God! Wouldn't you say padre? Yeah, actually, right, you would. Buenos dias, padre. Oh God! The smile that reaches Father David's face. Oh my God! He looks so happy. <laughs> it's like a dog that you just walked in and said outside to. <laughs> Oh, uh, outside and play. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> wow. and as he says, as he says that, Miguel actually reaches out, takes one of the cups on the counter, and gives it to Father David. Oh, 
Gracias. <laughs> the Spanish with this accent feels so weird in my mouth. <laughs> oh, it's so cute. <laughs> it is pretty adorable. It is. Not gonna it's so lie. adorable. <laughs> it is. It is. <laughs> And evidently, it has also melted a little bit of Miguel's uh, hardened work, calloused heart, as he does. Uh, he almost chuckles just a little bit, nodding at Father David before he goes back to making more coffee. Miguel, as Miguel turns and does his thing, Father David, just floating on cloud fucking nine, Will pause and go to see if there's any more kitty paw prints. Because he doesn't he's... want Miguel to do all the shit in the kitchen. He wants to help out. So he will. He sees there are indeed kitty paw prints. Yeah. Is any of the food missing? Uh, he... none, of... Hmm? none of the food seems to be missing. Father David will start to clean up the paw prints. After taking a few sips of coffee. <laughs> Miguel almost... Miguel gets this strange look on his face, almost as if to say, Is that allowed? Can you do that? Wait, well, that's illegal. That... <laughs> exactly. I'm calling the police. Wait, that's illegal. But as Father David continues to clean the paw prints, he kind of just lets it be. He takes a sip of his coffee. Although he does seem a little bit, hmm, a little bit weirded out, honestly, he just watches him work. It doesn't take long before he goes to uh, the counter and starts working on a little bit of breakfast. Uh oh, question. Uh, because I was. Also, we, mm -hmm. I was video recording all the stuff from the chapel as well, because that's where the that's what the mm -hmm. recording was. It wasn't just an audio recording. <laughs> was there anything on the video? You found some very interesting things on the video. For one, it was staticky, and seemed to have a lot of interference. Right. That's mostly the that that is the. That, that's the annoying part of it, though, because you could almost swear that between all the static and all the distorted audio, you could spot three figures in there. You're not certain, though, because that could just be someone's shadow, but you really want to believe that it's someone else in there with you. I'm gonna need more proof. I'm gonna need more proof. Who knows? Perhaps the mansion itself holds your answers. <laughs> only you, if only you knew, you knew someone with high-level connections and a lot of money who could help you. <laughs> oh, sorry, oh, shush, DM. <laughs> I'm not the DM. So, uh, yeah, you are. Let's gonna speak. May I awaken you next are. and enter the scene? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Enter. Patty Green Adjuster. finally awakens from what has been an absolutely horrible hangover. Basically, it um, had her bedridden for an entire day. Oh, super great. Uh, Patty <laughs> woke up earlier than most others, but she was taking the time getting prepared for the day. Uh, she yeah. put a lot of worth she puts a lot of effort, rather, into her appearance. And also just felt like cleaning up a little bit after being bedridden for that long helps mm. her feel a little bit more refreshed. She follows the smell of coffee. It lures you to the kitchen. Through the dining room, around the table, and into the kitchen. And there she finds, well, the merry, quote-unquote, company of... Uh, Dr. Celeste LeBlanc, Miguel, and Father David McDougal. Also, three cups of coffee waiting on the, count, uh, on the counter. Oh. Do Dr. Oh. Celeste just has her head on the table, just fully tired, still. <laughs> oh, uh, good morning, everyone. Oh, uh, buenos dias. 
Miguel Aww. gives you a small look and a nod. Hello there, dear. How are you doing this morning? Uh, a lot better. Oh, that's Got very little... good. <laughs> We'd figured. It's good to see you up and about. Uh, vaguely. Ghost cat? Ghost cat. Uh, ghost cat? What? Bless you. <laughs> you hear an adorable sneeze. It came from nowhere. Oh. Actually, that reminds me. Uh, Patty turns to quote unquote Miguel. Uh. Habla usted inglés? Miguel turns. Uh, Miguel doesn't even turn to uh, to Patty, but just res uh, respond. Uh, Response. Okay. Uh, uh, fuck no! Oh. I gotta get my I gotta get my brain into Spanish. I did flunk it, but <laughs> I've been trying to keep it up. Mm. Just use Google Translate. Um, never. <laughs> As she types into Google Translate. <laughs> <That's> my... <laughs> 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 it's still a romance language. It's not that different. <sighs> from, Holy know... shit, I just passed my Spanish roll. Nice. <laughs> oh, wow. Fancy. Now I just need to also pass mine. So <laughs> Connor has like the same skill in Spanish that Raymond has. Oh, uh, I've got like 30% Spanish. Oh, that's way I only have 20. Oh. <laughs> I put it comically low, but on purpose. Yeah, we could. No wonder I couldn't, I couldn't remember what that was. <clears throat> anyway, Miguel doesn't even turn as he mumbles, Lo siento, no, señorita. Oh, fair enough. Uh, Patty pauses for a second, thinking about her response. Uh, mi español no es muy bueno, uh, pero pudo intentarlo? And you may absolutely say that in English. <laughs> uh, my Just Spanish is, isn't very good, but I can try. Um, I don't think I caught your name before. I'm Patty. Uh, Raymond introduced you as Miguel, but I have the vague feeling that's not actually your name. That's a big leave. <laughs> you barely Is know it, me. Though? Is it? Miguel keeps preparing the food, whisking together some eggs before he walks over to the stove and starts the very noisy process of, um, of making scrambled eggs like nice and fried up. And he mumbles something that uh, roughly translates to it's okay, miss. But aside from that, doesn't try to engage further in conversation. Alright. Well, uh, I tried. Anyways. Darling. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I fucking caught it. I was so fucking lucky. I managed to catch it at the same time as chicken. Okay. Yes. Damn it. Fucking combo break, you motherfucker. I never called you darling, you motherfucker. That was the joke, Coops. That, motherfucker. That was the joke. Mm -hmm. Darling, may, uh, may you please send me yes. uh, that pic? That picture of <laughs> Miguel. I I want to do something. Sure thing. Hang on. Is it call everyone darling? Do you just, uh, do you just want his token? Yeah, like his token, whatever drawing you did of him. Gotcha, gotcha. Hang on a sec. I, am, I apologize in advance, but also not really. 
hear the characters um, in here somewhere. Are you fucking sorry? <laughs> Wait, no, he's in D&D. &D. Um, NPCs? No. My campaigns. Haunted house. There he is. Uh, Father David does get up after, um, you know, cleaning up the, the kitty paw prints and goes over. Thank you. Mm, I almost called you darling again, but I'm not ready for the rest of the group to go yes. <laughs> no problem, dear. <laughs> uh, so, thank you very much. You're um, very welcome. Father David gets up and grabs the coffee after he's done cleaning. Mm. And uh, just great, just beaming. Like, he had a great night's sleep after weird, spooky events. He, he knows that the cat is there. He does look a little bit concerned at the, the food bowl. It is a little strange that the cat had it, has its apparently regular routine walk through here, but never stops to eat from the bowl. Yeah. What kind of cat food are we giving it? Are we get uh, are we giving it the good wet food? It's uh it's it was just like generic cat kibble, but with how the cat is avoiding it, he's thinking about uh, you know next time they go to town, he might get a little can of cat of like cat food to see if the cat will eat that. But Father David looks like he has news. But he, he's he's Ooh. waiting for uh, Ooh. Ooh. he's waiting for uh, Jonah to pop in. Oh, Patty, I have something that I need to show you. I need another pair of eyes. Mine have burned themselves out at this point. Uh, sure. What's up? Uh, just uh, I'll. Uh, after we're finished with breakfast, just come to my room, and I'll show you. Patty's like munching on an apple she grabbed out of the fridge. Um, uh, all right, sure. Jonah has or is now smelling the eggs that Miguel is cooking. Gets better as he adds bacon. Mm, now I just want bacon. Stop it. Never. I'm hungry. So, <laughs> Jonah will wander in. I'll go get food. Oh, thick breakfast again. This being one of the first times in a while that Jonah's eaten breakfast twice in a row. Aww. Normally because he sleeps in. Good morning to you, Jonah. How'd you sleep oh. last night? Not bad, yourself? I slept pretty decently. You won't believe the guest that I had last night. Hmm. It's that cat. Oh, we finally find it? Yeah, the little deer came and curled up on my legs last night as I was drifting off. Yes. Yes. It looks like we ought to find a name for the little thing. Hmm. What color was it? I didn't get to see it. It was a little a wee bit too dark. Are you sure it was a cat? Are you sure it was not? Raymond gently curling on your legs in the no. night, <laughs> <laughs> purring for you. That is truly cursed. <laughs> it may have been that a raccoon or something. Know. Yes, even a raccoon that curls up on legs. Why not? Very friendly raccoon, especially in the British countryside. They are urbanized. <sighs> You're just chilling. Patty, I don't believe you were there for the, the little search party that we made for the cat. 
No, I was uh, deeply regretting my previous life choices. <laughs> oh, we've all been there. <laughs> <sighs> Father David pulls a, 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 an expression when Jonah says, we've all been there. <laughs> You're not sure if this is staunch agreement of like, yes, we've all been extremely hungover or vague confusion because he has most certainly not been there. He just can't tell. But he does... Um, he does uh, give Patty a, a slightly sympathetic look. Well, if anything, it's good to see you not feeling so sickly. And now we have a cat. Oh, we do? <laughs> All right. That's yeah, pretty. Yeah, free pet. Huh. So is it like a stray? I just live here? Apparently. I think so. Well... When we catch it, I'll uh, I'll start looking up a vet that we can take it to make sure it's dewormed and gets all of its shots. Oh, absolutely. I mean, no one has actually no one has actually seen the cat yet. Well, it curled up on me legs last night. It was purring away. What? Well, it's going to be a raccoon or something. <laughs> just bothered <laughs> David. Slight Disney princess abilities. But did you? <laughs> but did you Look at my adorable little baby boy. I hope it turns out to be. A, I hope it turns. I would say I hope it. Yeah. Did I stutter? I would hope it turns Daddy, out to be a possum, Jordan, but the they don't live there. <laughs> Daddy, Jonah, look at the cat I found. That's a raccoon. Oh, it's such a deer, isn't it? <laughs> it's hissing. It's so friendly. Hey, it's just a funny little cat. It's it's hissing. Yeah, cats do that. It's the raccoons just making grabby hands. <laughs> they oh, he's just a shy little thing, isn't he? He's biting you. <laughs> Did you actually see it last night, Father McDougal? <laughs> no, but I felt it hop up on the bed and curl up on my legs, like I've said about three times before. My point still stands. No one has seen it yet. <laughs> well, it was too dark to see the cat. I give LeBlanc, or Patty gives LeBlanc a side look. Five dollars that it's actually a badger or something. Badgers would wouldn't curl better. up on your legs and sleep peacefully through the night. I'm gonna go for something maybe a little bit bigger. The, the Irish is infecting! It's just, gonna be a, it's just gonna be a wild fox or something. Oh, don't you worry, Professor LeBlanc. Soon enough, it'll overcome you, and then you'll be one with the orange, white, and green. Then I'll be one with the potato. I feel like that's vaguely racist, but at the same time, also kind of funny. I'm just gonna enter. I'm just gonna fucking enter. <laughs> <laughs> Raven will enter, really chipper, perfectly dressed as usual. Just, morning, all. Ah, coffee. Delightful. Fuck, fuck off. Miguel <laughs> does indeed. <laughs> Miguel is is very happy that he's done with making coffee because that means there's coffee on the counter, and Raymond is less likely to take the coffee he's holding in his hand because he's also making <laughs> breakfast, oh. which is starting to smell fucking amazing. <laughs> I'll just take. Patty didn't actually grab a cup of coffee because nobody told her that that one of those was supposed to be hers. Well, oh. Kind of fucking rude. How oh, is it rude? You didn't take one. Uh, Patty. Yeah? Uh, he thinks Miguel might have made a cup of coffee for you too. Oh, he's very sweet, isn't he? Yeah, although it looks like Miguel could use more than one. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> oh, Raymond, okay. yeah. Raymond will look around, finally see Patty, and go, Ah, Patty. Long time no see. Back from your excursion to Mount Hangover. How was the trip? Uh, brutal violence, and I left parts of me behind that I wish were still with me today. Ah. I am left scarred, brutalized, and forever changed. Well, don't don't just stand there. Rehydrate yourself. There is uh, water in the fridge. I think orange juice. There's coffee here. Water in the fridge? Don't you have a tap? There's a sink. Never mind. Never mind. Well, as much as I would love to have it, there's no sparkling water coming out of the sink. You, <gasps> does Patty look over at Father McDougal after that speech of Mount Hangover? <laughs> uh, 
No. All right. She does not see the expression. He is pulling. <laughs> uh, sparkling water. You only drink sparkling water, don't you? No. Who drinks water? I drink only the finest of orphan tears. <laughs> Probably, <laughs> of course. No. No, Rainbow. No, I drink all kinds of things, really. However, I found Chardonnay, that, However, I found that for the occasional hangover and the need to rehydrate, sparkling water tends to be a good choice. It makes you take smaller gulps. Lessens the risk of throwing up again. Learned that from a roommate. We called him Barfy. And they were roommates. And they were roommates. And they were roommates. His actual name was James Barfington III, but the nicknames was very uh, <laughs> practical. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we're on the hunt for a wild cat, Raymond. Congratulations, you've joined the party. A wild cat? Yeah. Oh, did you Free find? Pet, remember? Did you find a little miscreant that left the paw prints all over the floor? Oh, don't talk about the wee burn so badly. No, Not no, no. This cat's a miscreant, but in a good way. <laughs> the wee darling came up last night and slept on my legs. Why are, they, why are the cats running around? I don't know shelters. I don't know workhouses. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know prisons. Raymond, Raymond is. I can um, never tell if you're being sarcastic or serious, and that's deeply worrying. <laughs> Raymond is not. Okay, no, we just. Oh, right, Connor wasn't here. Okay, we established that Raymond is not an animal person. Like, at best, he doesn't give a shit about the cat. So, if you want to go for the. You know, if you want to go searching for a wild cat, go ahead. I, I don't think with how the. How the cat was acting, I don't think it was uh, that wild at all. Oh, did you see it? It slept on my legs last night. I didn't get to see it. It was too dark. Ah. Well, don't forget to... Don't forget to hoover the sheets a bit after that. Well, I don't think it left anything. Raymond trying his best to imitate the local dialect. You know, ho <laughs> hoover instead of vacuum. You can you can say vacuum. It's okay. We don't judge much. It just looks like when in Rome, do as the Romans do. We're not in Rome. It's an expression. <sighs> oh fuck off. <laughs> and apparently Dexter Celeste LeBlanc has gotten so little sleep that she is testy. I, she's, you not a morning per she's not a morning person. You feeling all right there, Dr. Celeste? I didn't get a lot of sleep last night because I was a little too excited. But oh. also, I'm not a morning person. Oh, I see. Well, then we shall overlook the hostile behavior, shall we? Well, I've known quite a few members of the parish that weren't quite morning people either. And they get a bit testy. When you, uh, yeah. well, when you talk to him. Um, but... don't forget, don't forget, Father McDougal, we do have the, we are supposed to go talk to, uh, Dr. Richard Grace today about the cross. Oh, yes. Patty, you weren't there. Would you like to see it? See what? It's an we angry found... cross. A what? We... It was like a wee puzzle, and we ended up finding this cross in the chapel up north of the uh, the estate. And it's the strangest thing. He digs into his pocket, and he pulls out uh, something all wrapped up in a white handkerchief. He unwraps it, and it's the cross, which he presents to Patty. Yeah, it oh. looks pretty cool, doesn't it? I present to you Angry Jesus. Angry Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know... Catholic uh, Jesus. Catholic Jesus. Uh, chicken. Mm -hmm. Would I be able to make a role of, say, anthropology, history, or occults? 
Do you understand a little more about what about Angry Jesus? Same question from me. History and occult would uh, would suffice, and you can certainly try. Yeah. Both are either or. Both yeah. either or. Can I can I try rolling history again because I failed it last time? Sure thing. Yay! Can I also Yay. roll? You, you know what? I'm too tired to I'm too tired to think to think. Of. <coughs> we'll make both my history and occult. I made my history roll. Have a Oh, very nice, very nice. Again, yeah. none of you really come up with anything. It doesn't seem like there's a precedence in history for this sort of depiction of Jesus. Mm-hmm. The cult does turn something up. Can I... Patty knows that depicting Christ in depicting any religious um, uh, f- figure or symbol in... Um, a defamatory fashion is something that occultists are pretty fond of doing. Huh. I'll snap a picture with my phone. Hmm. Well, I... since <clears throat> it's, uh, you found it here? In the chapel. Can I attempt a cult history? A cult history? Sure thing. <laughs> On the cross. On the cross. Is that a thing? Yeah, There's, it's probably a thing. And there is history. There is not an occult history. I it was a it was a specialized category that I asked for. Oh. Yeah. Actually See, is a, it actually is a thing. <laughs> this is a if, thing though. If I mean if it's a thing I mean with that extra knowledge to see if I might be able to pinpoint what kind of cult this might be from. Uh... Oh, oh, wait. Need to mute myself. Uh, no. <laughs> Google just no. losing it. So unfortunately, yeah. Unfortunately, you haven't had enough enough coffee to really rattle your brain back into motion. Yeah, it's, uh, well, considering this wasn't found in, like, the American Midwest, you can't really blame, like, fire and brimstone creatures. Um, it was, uh, this is probably made by, like, um, Victorian-era occultists and superstitionists. They were big on depicting religious figures, typically Judeo-Christian, with, like, angry faces and whatnot it's supposed to be like a symbol of rebellion or oh geez what's the word iconoclasm no anarchy no <coughs> uh, inversion no. there we go yeah that's the uh, word probably. there you go hmm. it's supposed to have like symbolic power and stuff Well, thank you for your insight, Patty. Mm, um, of course. If you if you want, you can go with us. We're to. Uh, we are headed to Cambridge University. I'm going to talk to an old friend of mine. Uh, oh, sure. Prof- professor Richard Graves. He should be star professor of archaeology, and uh, he might be able to tell us a bit more about that cross. He's. I would love to just send him a picture of it, but he's a bit old-fashioned. So I just send more pictures. <laughs> You'll get it eventually. Just fax, I'm more than fax it to him. I don't fucking him. know. Snail mail that shit. Just fax it to <laughs> him. I forgot that he really doesn't use email all that much, and even fax machines are a little bit much. Uh, get on his level. Take a fill or. Er, Take a uh, film picture and then mail him a box with the film canister in it. Well, we could always send. <laughs> Actually, fuck it. You know what? Raymond will be a bit snappy, nappy too. Just well, we could always send him a piece of microfilm with a with a messenger pigeon. I assume. <laughs> it hasn't. It hasn't. It hasn't escaped my. It hasn't. It hasn't. <sighs> 
I'm too tired right now. Take it slow, LeBlanc. You got it. I believe in you. You know what? You know what? You know what? We believe in you. We believe in you. Okay, you know what? I'm going to be a bit nicer to Celeste. Because obviously she's just a complete bitch in the morning. It's not her fault. It's just, you know, it's how you're born. It's how you're raised. Some people just have no manners from the childhood. And no one's a morning person. Exactly. So Raymond will. Ju Raymond is, which makes him so much worse. <laughs> uh, Raymond's not a real person, then. It's, it's true. It's true. <laughs> it's true. He's. <laughs> Raymond was the ghost all along. Got it. Raymond, no. Raymond ah, will. Uh, I got it. Just... No, Raymond will finish his coffee, uh, set it down. Well then, I propose a field trip to this uh, professor friend of yours. We could take the. Uh, the local train, we'll why take... not? That sounds lovely. I was gonna I was gonna say we'll take my van, but sure, the train will also do. Well it's a lovely day outside. We can enjoy the countryside a bit, have a Ah, oh, it's been a while since I've hopped on a train. I mostly just drive now. Yes. Well <laughs> never... why not enjoy <laughs> Sorry. Why not why not enjoy a little bit of nostalgia and Alright train field trip Raymond's buying oh heavens well yeah, like Raymond cares he's already on his phone looking up the prices for a ticket well, Mr. Shafter please allow me to help with that what do you mean I wouldn't want to abuse your uh, your charitable kindness oh pish posh you guys pay for your train tickets <laughs> You're not even there. Just Father David looks at Jonah. Yes, he is. Oh, is he? Oh, right. Yeah, he's at the table. <laughs> Father David looks at Jonah, you. but there is no judgment know, in those eyes. I know a guy or two. <laughs> Meanwhile, Miguel finishes up cooking breakfast. It is. God damn, it smells so delicious. Some kind of scrambled eggs. There's bacon and some other kind of meat in there, too. You do not know how he managed to, like, make magic in the kitchen but he did it and he goes and places a plate in front of each of you I also get it you like describing food also also places a cup of coffee in front of patty because she didn't take hers oh thanks he nods at her and finishes up placing the plates and then goes and uh, starts cleaning up the cooking utensils that he used my friend, you are an angel in the kitchen. That actually gets uh, a little bit of a smile. Anyway, Ray David is gonna help him out. Ba -do -ba -do. Raymond finishes his thing with like one. Actually, he doesn't finish. He just looks at Miguel. Miguel, do you want to join us or not? Or do you want to be yes. alone in the mansion for a day or so? That's a small sigh. But Miguel mumbles something under uh, under his voice. Basically, Don't this is obligated. this is how they do. Miguel gives some kind of response, and Raymond interprets it as, uh, as the response that he wanted. I don't feel obligated to go. You you don't have to if you. Don't. Oh, Raymond, I would. I wish you would learn proper English one of these days. Raymond. Oh, Miguel. <laughs> Miguel, I oh Miguel, I wish nope, we would learn nope. proper. Miguel, I wish we would learn even conversational English one of these days, or maybe a bit of German. Um, <laughs> well then, uh, those are tickets for five adults, and I suppose Miguel can enjoy a nice peace, a uh, nice peaceful day alone here, watching TV, soap operas, I assume. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look at my drawings. I heard good thing about Coronation Street. <clears throat> anyway. Miguel gives a small nod. Surprisingly, that was actually what he'd responded. He's a little surprised that right, Raymond uh, got it, but... Well, yeah. Raymond, Raymond looks up and... Well, you know, uh, train travel is not for everyone. Some people enjoy it, some don't. Miguel is the kind of guy who likes a nice donkey ride once in a while, but not the train. God damn it! The train is too, mo too modern. Okay. <laughs> and immediately any <laughs> smile that Miguel was wearing is gone. I didn't say that out loud. <laughs> I'm just obviously thinking. 
<laughs> Raymond will. No, we can all tell that you're thinking it. Play on a person's face before, but <laughs> it's the first time for everything, Raymond. Thanks for this new experience. <laughs> Raymond looks up from his phone and goes, uh, Our train leaves at noon ish. Should be, should be enough time. Yes. Uh, also, thank you for the food, Miguel. He gives you a small nod. Um, I will, if, if he's not using the sink, I will wash the dishes off, my dishes off, and put them in the dishwasher. That's not and, proper. As you approach with the dishes, he straight up takes them from you and puts them in the dishwasher himself. Aww. Snatch. Snatch. Oh, oh, Yoink. Oh, I was going to take care of that, but okay. You obviously don't have, don't have any idea how to wash a dish properly. Snatch. <laughs> um, leave a, leave the professional <coughs> work. One moment. Um, Patty, that thing I wanted to show you. Just meet me upstairs whenever you're ready. Yeah, sure. I've already finished eating. Where are you going? Upstairs. <laughs> Take it off. I was off. going to get changed before you got in there. All right. No, that's illegal. Anyway, I just sorry. Just... I, I just failed breathing there. <coughs> oh. And um Roland roll a D one hundred for us <coughs> again. Uh, I guess. I wanted to ask, is there already um an answer to my uh query? Uh let me see. The query was I can about... copy paste it again for you. If yes, you want please. to. Because it's been like Just so I can give you a proper answer to it. It has been over a month, it's fine. <coughs> <coughs> oh my god. Jeez. There. Yes. I'm so sorry for what I'm drawing, but also <coughs> not. It's the thing I sent to... Uh, I in, I inquired over in Germany. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, let's see. 50 BMG. Fully automatic. What? I was joking that you picked up like a fucking assault rifle. No, why would I? <laughs> oh, I don't know. It just seems like a dumb thing to have, and Raymond's an American and a fucking idiot. Alrighty. Um, yeah, but he's also. A... You have gotten a response <coughs> from. Uh, you have gotten a response via email from uh, someone that you were in contact with about this. I shall write it out for you in case you want to keep it hidden. Yeah, sure. Let's see what it is. I mean, Raymond doesn't want to keep anything hidden. If anything, he will just forget to mention it. <clears throat> Patty, while uh, waiting for Celeste to finish changing, <coughs> will pack up some stuff in her room, primarily her camera and laptop, and an notepad. Yeah. Raymond is thinking about uh, putting on his, his travel clothes, but... Um, no. If we're going to... Um, uh, where do we go? Fuck. Uh, what was the university called? Cambridge. 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 Right. I'm sorry. I forgot that I was muted because I'm That's fine. reading. No, if, Beautiful. No. Oh, nice. If we're, go uh, if we're going to Cambridge, then uh, surely a suit and tie is proper attire. I mean, this is... 2021. I mean, it is. I mean, it's. I mean, surely I know it's. It, it's not on the level of the American Ivy League, but you know, you have to try. You have to try to make them feel important, even if they're not anymore. <clears throat> Again, not saying any of that out loud yet. There you go. Hmm. He then reads his emails and just uh, gets a very <coughs> gets a, a slightly puzzled look as he says, oh, "Interesting." He looks around. I don't think anyone is interested in that sort of information. 
Well, There's a curious look from Father McDougal. <clears throat> I just, I'm trying to remember who was there when we found the torture room. Uh... Father McDougal? It was Father McDougal and Jonah. Yeah, and no one else, right? Yep. That's fine then. Uh, he... <clears throat> He looks up. He looks up and says, "Well, uh, oh, remember those uh, steel tools we found? Apparently, they were made in the fifties uh, or sixties. Very much mass-produced, West Germany." Yeah, surprisingly common or surprisingly recent. I mean, yes. I was. It's a shame because it means they're much harder to pinpoint. I was hoping they were pre-World War One. They would easily stand out in the DIN register then. Um, can we just, can we pause for a second real quick? What do you need? I was looking, I went, because I was curious. I was like, what is the normal, like, attire that they expect for students? And also for professors? Apparently there is, apparently you can be a doctor of divinity. Yeah. <laughs> I'm doctor right. divinity. It's just, it, it, it blew my mind. Yeah, you have a doctor in religious studies. Yep. Oh, is yeah, that it's like a about? theology degree. <clears throat> For some reason, I was just thinking of divination classes from Harry Potter. No. <laughs> we're, we're not surprised. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's okay. You have to... Okay. You have to remember one thing. Uh, the University of Cambridge is and well over, well over 800 years old. <laughs> They also have philosophy, though. They so kept... The no, they kept... Do you know how old philosophy is? <laughs> Way older than that. Yes, they do, but... They kept a lot of names that seem odd nowadays, but it's just a part of a, like, really old tradition. I suppose. It's older than your entire country, Zephy. Yep. Like, four times yeah, as old. So it was a lot of things. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so Raymond... Uh, Raymond says... Uh, continues. Anyway, I was hoping it was pre-World War One. It would easily stand out in the DIN register then, but maybe we can find some import receipts. I gotta admit, I'm not up to date with how the import customs tax was handled in the 60s, but I can find out. Either way, there should be data somewhere. I wonder, Wait. I wonder if there's an office somewhere in here with detailed financial records. Hmm. Yeah, you'd probably. We should probably uh, try looking into whoever owned this house before we or at the time. I mean, surely we can find that stuff. Yes, that should be relatively easy. Would think so. Is our mm -hmm. is it our place to snoop though? It's not snooping. I mean, with it's, what we found. It's not snooping, I mean, Father. It's research. You should have all of my current notes at this point. I suppose it could be considered research. He gently yes. sips his coffee. You have <laughs> Looking a bit concerned. Father, Father, it's, <laughs> Father, it's not spying. It's just a healthy interest in contemporary history. I suppose so. <laughs> if you if you insist. <laughs> How late is it right now? It is not very late. Uh, all of this to uh, all of this uh, talking, breakfast, whatnot. I want to say it didn't take more than one and a half hours. So nine thirty or so. Around. So I want to say we have about two hours before we have to leave. Because, you know, I want to be at the train station a bit early, just in case. You never know. Exactly. Plus, Raymond has heard things about the British railways. And him only knowing American railways, he of course thinks the worst of them. Of course. Hmm. 
Well, uh, Father McDougal's already ready. Well, you're always ready. You only have one outfit. Don't don't shame him. Not don't sh outfit shame him. <laughs> not shaming the priest. Well, maybe a little. <laughs> we have multiple outfits. It's not just one. <laughs> I didn't say it out loud again. <laughs> I'm not saying these awful things out loud. I'm just thinking them very, very, very clearly. <laughs> All right, all right, all right. Well, uh, well, the others. While the others get ready, oh, I'd like to share this. What have you done? Thank you, Carol, for sending me that reference picture of the uh, you know. What? what? <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> Please don't be mad. No! Please! Oh, no. <laughs> oh, mysterious oh, man, man, tell me your name. <laughs> Please tell me your name. <laughs> what have you wrought? Just gonna put it on the video. There we go. So, what you're telling me is Miguel is just Jesus. <laughs> No, but he is like yes. right off of a of a romance novel cover. I hope you don't mind me using that for the video thumbnail. Oh well, yeah, don't don't worry at all. Use <laughs> use the shitty sketch. Yes. Anyway. Also, does that mean you can draw again? Does that mean I can get my token for the other game? Yeah. Good. <laughs> anyway. Um I mean, I'm gonna do it. Probably not. So mean. I, but I will pay you in exposures, like 50 of them. Delicious, delicious exposures, which anyway. I cover my cereal with. Anyway, exactly. Raymond, Raymond doesn't really have anything else to do. It's a shame because any other character would just go, oh, we're going to a train. Let's make sandwiches for the trip. But <laughs> no. that's adorable. That's what? That's like the the thing you do when you go on like a day trip in a train. You make sandwiches and like, I don't know, some cold leftovers, some potato salad, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> it's fun. Some hard boiled I mean, eggs to eat. Oh, I'm old. I'm no, I'm old. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> no, it's adorable. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Father David will just kind of sit there happily. He he looks so fucking giddy for some reason. Raymond is interested is kind of interested in why you're so giddy, but doesn't dare ask. Uh, because I mean, yeah, honestly, let's go field trip. Human? Field trip time. I mean, he, no, he's he's not. I don't know. He's gonna ask later, like when they're when he can f get like Father David. At a, like, in a more private location or something. I mean to ask you, it's such a sensitive question. Why are you happy? Why are you so happy? Why are you How are you happy? Why are you smiling? What is your secret? Why are you smiling so much? <laughs> what are you hiding? Jesus. I was just smiling because we're all going out on a trip together and it sounded nice. <laughs> That's a that sounds like liberal bullshit, but okay. It does. <laughs> it does. <laughs> All right, so Celeste is going to show Patty some bullshit. I was kind of hoping you would show us that video so I can make fun of it, but oh well. I mean, there's a reason why Father David McDougal isn't, you know, talking about the fucking ghosts they talked to last night. Yep. Well, of course not. You wouldn't. Also, he probably told Patty to not, not not Patty. Sorry, he told Celeste to not really rope him into that, if she can help it. <clears throat> Please, I'm just a priestly man. I'm not educated for this kind of bullshit. It's a sensitive topic, and we just met these people. I don't it's want a sensitive this new group topic. of fine young people thinking I'm a loon. Oh, this is a sensitive topic. A topic, especially for the church. Especially for the church. You're a priest. You're already a weirdly sinister. 
You'd be surprised at how sensitive the existence of ghosts is for for, uh, for the Catholic Church. I mean, I'm aware. It's just the way that Coop look, said it. Look, no. the only uh, <laughs> declare them demons and begin an exorcism. There is there is an official no, list. Just... <laughs> There's an official list of invisible people with magic powers, and if you're not on that, you don't exist. All right. <laughs> The church, the church I, has to allow ghosts. I'm not a trained exorcist. That could land me in a heap of trouble. They could excommunicate me. <laughs> if you do something that's not approved of by, uh, approved of by the Vatican, you're kind of uh, shit out of luck. <laughs> you're in deep water. So, Zephy. I am here. Hello, show me I'm this video. And also, we're pretty sure that uh, Father McDougal can't swear. Yeah. <laughs> he is Anyways. yet to canonically swear. Yeah, once I've finished changing, and obviously, and once Patty's in the room, I will show her the the video at the video and the spirit box recordings from. I don't wait for her to like finish changing and just kick in the fucking door with a knife. No. <laughs> As you do. All right. Just full on, just start stabbing everyone. <laughs> End the game oh, quickly. I just want to so, see a pair of eyes. What is in these cream. videos? Chicken. <laughs> the video is strange to say the least. It is of Patty and. No, not sorry, not, sorry, not Patty, sorry. I was to say, what the fuck? Yeah, Dr. screw Celeste. Patty. It is of Dr. Celeste and Father David Mac uh, MacDougall out in the tiny chapel that you did not ex uh, know existed, so you don't really know where this is. You see that it's a very static vid uh, video. It's full of interference and um, strangeness. Basically, it looks halfway like a corrupted video. But you can discern that it's, it's uh, Dr. Celeste and Father MacDougall seemingly having a conversation with a third person. Someone is answering yes and no to their questions, at least. They are rather strange questions about whether they are dead or not. And at some point... You do see the candles in the background flickering in very odd ways. Stuff like going out and turning back on and one of the candles falling over seemingly without anyone touching them. But it, the video is so corrupted and so low quality that it's hard to say if it's really anything. I just wanted a second pair of ears and eyes on this because I wasn't entirely certain. And obviously, we were a bit excited after the last night's events. Alright, so what am I looking for here? Uh, just, what do you. I just wanted to get your take on it. What do you make of it? It looks like a grainy video of you talking to some guy. That's the thing, though. There was no one there, other than me and Father McDougal. Right. Sure. I, I can promise you. And you can ask Father McDougal for his testimony as well on that. <laughs> I dare you. I dare you to ask this man. Please. <laughs> I'm sorry. Apparently, there's... Apparently, uh... Fire trucks. Nope. Yeah, so I'm sorry to fire somewhere. Oh. Jonah, you wouldn't be having nothing to do with this, would you? Look, Celeste, you. I... <laughs> For legal reasons, I'm not answering this question. Just turning a <laughs> just turning a lit just turning a lit match in his fingers while he looks longingly at the flame. Just... <laughs> no, I wouldn't have anything to do with that. Listen, I have. To get a bit overzealous when it comes to 
for lack of a better word, ghost hunting. And I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't seeing something where there was nothing. Uh, look, Celeste, you seem nice. But it looks like a video of you talking to a guy and you not seeing them could just be it's dark. It could be a lot of things. It just seems a bit of a stretch to, uh, shall we say, assume <coughs> the... Paranormal. The paranormal, sure. And that is why I, that's why I asked for your opinion. Look, Celeste, I've been ghost hunting, quote unquote, for a really long time. It's basically been like the majority of my career. And every single time I've gone poking through for something, it's always been nothing. It's just people's minds acting in weird ways and superstition taking over from there. It's almost always culturally based in odd circumstances with people who are either meant mentally altered in some way, whether it be fear, alcohol, whatever. Not once has it ever been like the dead rising from their graves to come speak to the living. And I don't want to kill your excitement here, but I'm not going to lie to you. No, and I appreciate the honesty. I'm assuming this is what you wanted to talk to uh, your friend in Cambridge about? Uh, more or less just the cross. And oh. uh, a little bit more research to find out about this Father Prescott. Right. Ooh. Sorry, I don't know why I'm yawning. Just to see. Well, it is early morning. But I just wanted to do my research. And exactly see what we can pull up. Whether it's ghosts or not, history is my passion, and I. This is a bit of an interest. And this house, too. That's why I'm here. Cool. So, uh. Yeah, also, I think there's a guy trespassing, and you, sh you should probably get that sorted out. You know, calling the cops or something. I'll lobbies. I'll notify the. I'll notify the landowners. <laughs> I notify the local constabulary. <laughs> but perhaps more proof needs to be got. Perhaps more proof needs to be found, or. Perhaps it is all in my head. Who knows? Perhaps we must sacrifice Patty Green. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> no, Again, Patty Green's gonna on. be the only one left alive at the end of this. Mm-hmm. Oh, uh, yeah. But I appreciate your time. And again, I just... I spent a lot of time last night looking at it and listening to it for clues and... I just wanted a fresh pair of eyes and ears that wasn't my own. All right. You want my you want my honest opinion? What? You want to find ghosts, right? Prove the real and stuff. I mean, it's a little bit of why I have my career. Some <laughs> I have a personal history with it. Right. So it sounds like you're looking specifically for evidence that will prove you right. Yes. And the way the people's minds work, they when they're trying to find a specific conclusion, they'll ignore all of the bits of evidence that go against the conclusion. They Inf ignore those Inf whether intentionally or unintentionally. Information bias, yes. And it happens to the best of us. I get it. You want to find proof of this thing that you put so much of yourself into. But it, it's just a grainy video with the guy you probably didn't see because it was dark. Just 
chicken. Was it actually dark yes. enough where we there was possibly a person there that we just didn't see? It was dark. It was the dead of night, and all you brought were uh, were flashlights that flickered a little bit once in a while. However, you are certain that there were no other people than you and Father David uh, David McDougall in that little chapel. You're also certain that the voice you heard came from the ghost box and not from someone just hiding in the chapel. I mean, I'm certain on all accounts, but then again, information bias is a thing. <sighs> more proof, more proof. But I appreciate, I appreciate you looking at what I found. Sure, no problem. We should probably get going, or they're gonna leave without us. Mm, that's fair. We've already left without them. <laughs> <laughs> We're already in We're Cambridge. Already on the lawn. We're already in Cambridge. <laughs> have have fun spending the day with uh, Celeste LeBlanc, Patty. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't wish that on anybody. She's not that bad. Ghosts. <laughs> now, who wants to check out the spooky bait? Now, Patty, do you want to check out the spooky basement and possibly we die? Found skulls. <laughs> Fake skulls, but uh, skulls. <laughs> they were fake skulls, but they were skulls. <laughs> we go on a train trip. All right, Cambridge yeah. it is. Train. Trains. I hope I like we prepared trains. a map of Cambridge, chicken. I did not bring a map of Cambridge. Oh, like I did not find that. this to be necessary. Yeah, seriously. I like trains. I like, I like, I like trains. trains. No, well, well. My trains. Oh, my trains. Oh, my small Anyway. Tiny little trains. <laughs> All of you get on the trains. They're not tiny little trains, however, so it's a it's a fair bit less exciting, but you know. Well, I would assume they're like small modern electric trains. Well, yes, they are, but they're not tiny. Anyway, <laughs> you get on the trains. Uh, Raymond finds that the stereotypes and all the horror stories that he heard uh, were pretty much unfounded. It's a regular train system. It's not infested with transients and cockroaches like he feared. They're not running on time, but which trains are? And within a uh, within within an hour, you arrive at London. It does take a little bit of. Well, no wait. Cambridge is not in London. Within an hour, you arrive at your destination. It is in fact. <laughs> Fortunately, isn't... you do not need to take the tube because that is an entirely different beast. The University of Cambridge, as it turns out, is in Cambridge. Exactly. <laughs> Who would have guessed? Yeah, it's amazing. I what, know. What an amazing coincidence. <laughs> You do, up need, you do end up needing to take a bus from the train station and to the university, oh, but wow. luckily it's not a long ride. Yeah. Also, an hour train ride to Cambridge. I think I can pinpoint where that little village is. Well, I said within an hour. Yeah, but that's not long. It isn't. That's like... It's... it's... Hmm. What is that? My Hun my times might be a, my times might be a little off. I am used to a very small country. Well, that would put England the... England is not a very big place. It's not big, England yeah. England is not. And neither is Denmark. But yeah, so I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of figuring that Danish transport times probably correlate. Let's see. Local train. Uh, an hour. 120 kilometers, give or take. Why do we know. need the specifics of this? Yeah, exactly. Why no, do we I need just, the specifics? I just want to know where in the north this village is. <laughs> It's in the north. In the country. Yeah, it is. Where That's all you need anyway, to know. Anyway, anyway. Anyway, indeed, you arrive at Cambridge. So Raymond and has Raymond very much enjoys has... Raymond very much enjoys the train ride. He has no idea how to use a bus though. <laughs> There's your map of Cambridge, by the way. You will uh Thank you. I will not need it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so okay, so so when we get off the train, we will have to wait for the bus. Raymond oh, being a bit... Just... Yeah, what? 
it doesn't take too long since people often take the train and the bus to uh, to the university. No, of course, they would, be, they would be synced. Raymond, of course, will first try and find a bus ticket online. When that doesn't work, <laughs> he will resort to enter the bus. Go, Greetings, bus man. How much for a trip to Cambridge University? The quote-unquote bus man <laughs> gives you... Uh, very tired look. <laughs> a, bl a look that basically says Americans. And he tells you in a very flat, very done voice what the price is. Raymond hardly hears it because money doesn't really mean anything to him. I mean, Raymond is busy looking for the place for contactless payment and he can't find it. Exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry about him. He's then he will look. Then he will no. look for a credit card reader. He's just kind of like that. Yeah. Oh no, he's retarded. Well, I suppose. <laughs> I, after a, wait, after like half a minute, well, I suppose I could pay in cash. Do you have? Uh, can you have change for a hundred? <laughs> Father David. <laughs> I don't know what uh, I don't know what to tell you, but yeah, I don't know what to tell you, buddy. Cash or off? <laughs> it's the, I'm sorry, this is the smallest bill I have on me. It's just oh my God, Raymond, just get out of and I'll pay two of us. I'm very tempted to just Father, leave him. Father David pulls gently pulls Raymond into the bus and pays for the bus thing, giving the driver a very apologetic look. The driver gives him a small tip of uh, of his of his head to Father David. I'm sorry about him. He's no. He's just kind of like that. <laughs> don't worry. About, just came don't from worry across the pond. It. I don't worry about it. We're used to Americans. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much for your understanding, sir. He gives He's a, a bit of an idiot. He gives a little bit. Of, he gives a non-committal bus driver grunt, which usually means it's okay. Just take your seats. I have a schedule to uphold. <laughs> Patty gets on, starts putting coins into the teller machine. Uh, it's not the name of the fucking thing, but you know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking uh, about. Looks at Raymond while she's doing this. Looks at the bus driver. Yankees, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> the bus driver gives her a bad toothed grin. <laughs> <laughs> this has nothing to do with him being British. This has everything to do with him just having horrible dental hygiene. Yep, and also just horrible dental. Like, he doesn't get dental. Not with that job. Oh. Exactly. Oh. 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 Hey, Lena. We're at Cambridge. Oh. oh. Da, 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 da. You. The, uh, the bus drive to uh, from the station and to the uh, university itself is rather short. Thankfully. Because if you had to wrangle Raymond Shafter any harder, you'd need a muscle. <clears throat> but before long, you manage, uh, you manage to get there, you get off the bus, and before you stand, the Ivy League building that is Cambridge University. I... Unless you're from Oxford, then before you stand, the posters of, uh, of Cambridge University. Uh, you know. Yay! Yeah, just, just saying the Ivy League is a North American thing. Cambridge is not part of that. I'm Danish. And I'm German. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of excuse is that? <laughs> and half of us, over half of us are American. Yeah. America! None of us are British. As Brit we all know, every country is America. British. Uh, obviously. None of us are British. 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 You want a glass anyway. of water? I've only been to London for a week. Anyway. <laughs> Me too. I wasn't even to, to London much. I was mostly in, in Stratford-upon-Avon. 
Anyway. anyway. So we're at the, uh, one of the great schools of England. You're in one of the great schools of England, and you manage to uh, get in there, and immediately, um, Dr. Celeste is in her element. This is, these, these are her halls. This is her turf. And she knows where to, uh, where, to, where to go, where to find her good friend, Professor Richard Graves. Celeste's hair turns into a pompadour. She is now wearing a biker jacket. She snaps as she walks menacingly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Raymond, upon ex exiting the bus and seeing Cambridge for the first time in person, really just goes. Turned, really no, just goes. Turned into West Side. Just goes decent. <laughs> decent. That's such a Raven Shafter thing to do. <laughs> Uh, no, but actually, the more <laughs> no, I can make it worse. Just stands out, looks at the old, the eight hundred year old building, the tall spires, the uh, baroque architecture, and goes hmm, adequate. Uh... Then he enters. Ah, <laughs> uh, you bitch! Uh... <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> Such a bitch. Ah, uh, the animal. Ah, the halls of history. You walk through said halls of history, and soon enough, make it to the uh, make it to the office of Doctor Richard Graves. Knock, Has knock, a knock. little name a name plaque and everything. Wow. Hopefully he's not. Hopefully he's not in a lecture. Well, you think he wouldn't be, but with this being somewhat scheduled and whatnot. I mean, yes, but you never know. Or we can always just interrupt him if he is. Just Yo, bitch, what up? Just piling in the lecture. <laughs> Seems like an awful rude thing to be doing. Knock, knock, knock. You hear from inside. Uh, in, uh, 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 ta. I'll open the door. About halfway through that mumbling. Yeah. <laughs> You see the extraordinarily cluttered, but still immaculately organized, question mark, office of Dr. Richard Graves. It's very fitting that he is a, uh, that he is, I keep saying doctor, I'm sorry. It is very fitting that he is a professor of archaeology because his office looks like you could dig it out of the earth. He sits behind his desk piled high with all sorts of all sorts of uh, paperwork be it either report cards papers he needs to grade or research that he's trying to get through in some kind of timely manner you have no idea it all seems to blend into the same amorphous mass of schoolwork that just orbits around him perpetually he lights up as he sees you Ah, C Celeste, my, my gal, it's wonderful to see you, wonderful to, uh, 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 to see you. Come, come, sit. Just see you brought your friends as well. Would you Sorry like a careful spot of tea? Of, uh, 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 tea? of tea. <laughs> Sorry about the, sorry about the crowd. They all came, they all came for a field trip. Really. Uh, it's, yeah, field trip. Uh, it's no bother at all. It's always wonder wonderful to 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 uh, to, um, to to uh, to, uh, to, uh, to to see new faces within these uh, hallowed halls. Now, um, what was this um, this um, this um, this um, uh, fascinating artifact that you um, that you uh, attempted to uh, to, uh, to to, to uh, show me uh, yesterday? Uh, Father, I believe you have it. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, uh, this, is Father, this is Father McDougal. Oh, oh, wonderful to um to uh, to uh, meet you, uh, Father. It's been a while since we had any sort of um uh, men of the cloth within here. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you'll find the place uh, absolutely uh, wonderful, uh, adequate. Just, 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 just pleasant, pleasant all around. <laughs> I would, I would ask for anyone looking at uh, Father McDougal to make like a perception check, but 
I, I am, but... I'll go, ahead, I'll go ahead and ask them to do so for you. Oh no. If only if you're looking. In, chicken's getting infected by Dr. Richard Graves. I, mean, I don't have... Go we, ahead and we, we roll some spot hidden. Oh, spot hidden. Fair enough. Let's see. Spot hidden or any kind of make it. skill that you have. I'm not making Ooh. it. Ooh, wait, I have psychology. That would work. Well, holy shit, yeah. I actually made that. No, what it's even worse. I, I failed both yeah. of them to horrendous degree. No, spot hidden. That's what it was. <laughs> you... All right. Patty Green makes and it. And wait, is it below or above? I below. forget. Below. It's below. Hey. No success. Raymond is, yeah, Raymond is distracted by the utter chaos in the office, thinking about the roommate he once had at Princeton. And he, they were roommates. He didn't last long. It was, it was not James Buffington the third, mind you. He came after. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was your uh, long-time roommate, which historians would call a very close friend. Okay. <laughs> uh, you can see on, on Father McDougal's face, as this man prattles on, there's just, he's smiling, and it's a very polite smile, and it's very gentle. But you can see in his eyes just the pits of, like, vapor wave elevator it's music. On, it's wearing thin on him. <laughs> It's an absolute pleasure to meet with you, Professor Graves. Uh, I have it right here. And he reaches into his pocket and he takes out the little, uh, the little handkerchief and he unfolds it and he presents the uh, the cross to Professor Graves. Professor Graves takes a pair of spectacles and puts them upon his hooked nose as he looks down upon the thing and very gently lifts the handkerchief with the little necklace out of Father David McDougall's hands. Oh, oh this is, uh, this is, um, yes, yes, I see why you find this, uh, this, uh, f f fascinating. Uh, look at that. Hmm. Yes, I see. It's a, it's a forgery, of course, obviously. I mean, it's, uh, it's hardly, hardly even a hundred years old. <laughs> it's a very, um, it's a, it's, a, it's a skillful forgery, I must say. Uh, if it wasn't for the face, I got it completely wrong. Completely. There's a confused look from McDougal, who's listening to this man. And Dr. Richard Graves looks up at uh, Father McDougal. His eyes magnified to comical degrees with his spectacles. Googly eyes. Googly mooglies. Before he jerks into action again, seemingly understanding. Oh, oh uh, yes, this is, uh, s s supposedly, this uh, is uh, s s supposed to be, uh, as far as I can tell, a replication of, um, of, um, of um, a very um, popular reliquary necklace that you would wear. It's about, about, uh, about, um, about, uh, about a good uh, 150 years back. <laughs> This is uh, all wrong, though. I mean, uh, like, I, like I said, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the face alone is uh, well. Uh, uh, his good lord would never look quite so, um, shall we say, vengeful as I'm sure the good father knows. Uh, not to mention the materials. Mm, well, uh, so people from the uh, from uh, from about 150 years ago would not have uh, used this particular blend of tin. No, this is, uh, although a skillful one, um, a, 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 a forgery, absolutely. I do wonder if the compartment is still intact, though. Compartment? And forgery? What, is, what might it oh, be a forgery of? Oh, uh, like I said, uh, the little reliquaries that people would wear, usually with some sort of um, alleged uh, piece of either a saint or even Christ himself inside. Let's see. Usually, um, these compartments would be revealed if uh, if you uh, either unscrewed the button. Uh, this seems to be welded shut, however. Hmm. I do wonder. He brings it up to his ear, rattles it a little. Hmm. No discernible sound. Um, in that case, we can discern that uh, we can discern that it is not a. Um, 
it is not a, a solid that was stored within this 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 little this little thing. Hmm. Hmm. Quite peculiar stains on it, I must say. Oh. Well, these 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 stains you see here. He puts it down upon the table and points with the tip of uh, of um, of a pen um, around here, uh, around the face. Uh, you see how the these these slightly darkened spots um, here and and also and also here. Well, it appears that something has been running out of um, of the eye sockets of this this little fella. Oh my! That's and judging from the um, the weather the, the weathering and this this um, this um, rather cheaply made metal, I have to say it was some sort of strongly coloured uh, reagent. <laughs> if, if I were of an, um, uh, 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 a more a more morbid mood, I would almost wager that it would be someone's blood. But <laughs> oh, so it probably <laughs> is. Got it. Oh, it's uh, no, no, probably not. <laughs> probably just a just a little prank that someone would uh, that someone played on someone else. I uh, I imagine. Oh. Either way, uh, hardly as old as it pretends to be. Um, I would place it somewhere, uh, well, somewhere in the in the nineteen hundreds, obviously. Um, probably, uh, probably in the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the um, uh, uh, let's see, <laughs> you just you can feel just something emanating from Father <laughs> David. <laughs> It's not impatience. It's not impatience. It's Actually, something else entirely. <laughs> Raymond will Raymond will go past the vibrating Father David McDougal. Gently <laughs> vibrating. Okay. Mm -hmm. And just no, just go. Could it be possible that it was made in the nineteen fifties or sixties? Oh, quite perceptive of you. Are you are you an archaeologist as well? No, oh, no, a journalist. Um, don't worry about me. I'm. No, we found uh, we see. found other things um, in the same uh, locale as this cross that were around the same age. Oh yes, yes, it, it is quite possible that it's from from the sixties. I'd say. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Ah, a journalist, you say. A journalist, you say. Then fuck off. <laughs> so if something was running out of the thing. How would they get the fluid inside the? In, inside the crucifix. Well, if you uh, step closer, my girl, um, you can you may see this welding line around the bottom. This is where you usually unscrew the little compartment and f f f fill it up with a with a with a with a um, with a with a relic of, of some sort. Um, it is very possible that this this compartment was welded shut after it was filled with uh, whatever substance was. Was was filled into it. Ah, oh, weird. Any idea why they do that? Well, like I said, perhaps to play some kind of prank. Actually, I mean, uh, I mean you... if you see uh, if, if you see a depiction of uh, the good Lord of Jesus Christ uh, suddenly <laughs> suddenly frowning at you and crying blood, you'd be uh, right spooked. Um, do you recognize the? Uh... The significance of the frowning face or the angry face? I must admit, not at all. Uh, this, this is, um, this is more. Uh, this is probably sort of closer to the uh, softer sciences than archaeology. Uh, you, you want, you want someone of uh, religious studies, right? Um, so, I'm sure you could ask Father David or uh, LeBlanc, but the purpose of the face is like a. It, it, it has an occult meaning. Doing spells, it's. Sorry, I'm getting confusing. Um, the inversion has a symbolic meaning for certain kind of like uh, superstitious rituals, right? 
Oh, yes. Uh, usually a uh, bastardization of any religion uh, found in um, uh, ancient relics, uh, well, such as this isn't, uh, would, uh, would indeed have these uh, connotations that you, that you, um, that you uh, state, young girl, uh, young, a young lady. Patty. Patty, uh, a pleasure to, uh, to make your acquaintance. Nice to meet you, too. Um, yeah. So, oh, come here. weird. Okay. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, no. Uh, I hardly have much more to say about this. Um, it's a fascinating little, little trinket you found here, but uh, nothing of historical significance, really. Hmm. Well, now he... He uh, reaches out for the uh, necklace. And um, Professor Richard Graves... Uh, wraps it back in the handkerchief very neatly and places it back in Father David McDougall's hands carefully. Well, if, uh, if that would be all, I do have uh, f a few papers to, uh, to grade here. Although it's been abs absolutely uh, fascinating, always wonderful to, uh, to get a, 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 a visit from you, uh, LeBlanc, my girl. Ah, yes, likewise. Uh, all right, well, I probably need to start working on my lectures for today anyway. I appreciate the time. Uh, anytime, anytime. Oh, and uh, do, spot, uh, do do drop by for a spot of tea later if you uh, if you uh, if you if you do so care. I've got a uh, most, most wonderful uh, oolong that I wish to try out. Oh, wonderful. Uh uh, uh We'll, we'll do it for tomorrow. And do take care to get a little rest, perhaps, if you, if you, if, if you at all can. My dear girl, you look like you haven't slept a wink. I didn't sleep a whole lot last night. There were some exciting developments with my research. Oh, goodness. Well, you must fill me uh, in uh, once, you, uh, once you find the uh, opportunity to do so. Like I said, we'll do it tomorrow. Wonderful, wonderful. Now, uh, it was wonderful to meet all of you, and I must get back to my work. And with that, he um, bids you all farewell. Ushers us out. <laughs> Ushers you out, and probably starts grading papers, although you wouldn't be surprised if he was just reading up on the 15th, 100,000th research paper on Tutankhamun that he himself wrote. Probably. Hey, uh, Celeste. Zephy, that's you. I know. Sorry, I was rolling up a chip bag. Oh, uh, by the way, before I continue, I wanted, I didn't want to interrupt the scene, but I wanted a chance to, like, make a psychology roll to figure out what the fuck up is, a, what the fuck up is up with David. That's all right. I'd say go right ahead. What do you what think? Is up with Father David? Oh. <laughs> I, I will ask you that. Ooh. I have a general idea. It's oh, yeah. Uh, I thought I had said so earlier that Father David was just... Oh, the fucking elevator music. Herp derp. I'm uh, yep, yep. He's just... He's like, yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Ah, just like back in the parish. <laughs> hey, uh, Celeste. Yes. You wouldn't happen to know anybody who uh, works in like chemistry, specifically like metallurgy, who'd be able to tell us what the rust stains are? Uh, would I know, chicken? Would I know anybody in the Department of Science? Not really. Um, you are from the uh, hum um. Humanistics and humanistics and science departments don't really get um, well. They do get along. They just don't really mingle too much. I can certainly make an inquiry, or we can actually probably just take a walk and see. Yeah, sure. Um, if you don't know anybody, anybody, I could probably try and rustle somebody up. I mean, we can. Oh, this is starting to get exciting. It is. 
a regular mystery. Um. Yeah. Who knows? Howdy like opens up a fucking brochure that has like a little map on it. Yeah. Uh, if you it's got a, no of Cambridge. I see. I'll inquire with. I'll in, I'll like. I'll like. Like go back and inquire with Rich, Dr. Richard Graves again. See if he knows <laughs> anybody in the science department who could take a look at who could take a look at it for more information. He can't really think of anyone. Especially anyway. if you want to if you want to know what it's made of and stuff like that. Um yeah. he's already given you the you know, the information that he finds adequate in that it is a cheap tin blend. Mm-hmm. He also drops you the incidentally interesting little nugget that this uh, this t- uh, tin blend this particular casting metal is so cheap that pretty much anyone could buy and use it appreciate it father oh t- you're not father you're not father yeah. david you're not my father <laughs> david right. you're not my is this, real is, dad this this is this, this is not the first time i've been called a uh, father 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 <laughs> Father, daddy. Father, 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 daddy. Oh, daddy. Daddy, uh, daddy Graves, I have a question. No, <laughs> cease. <laughs> also, uh, I mentioned this last time, but Connor wasn't here last time. Da- uh, Professor Richard Graves is 100% build over one of the teachers that I had at university. It was impossible <laughs> to sit through his goddamn classes. Dude. Did you also pull Father David McDougal's of just sitting there with like the elevator music paper yeah. waved? Absolutely. So uh, he was the kind of man who would spend his weekends looking up words and dictionaries. Yeah. Uh, that's literally that's that's a thing that he bragged about doing: sitting down with a good glass of wine and then just looking up interesting words in the dictionary. Oh. Uh, tell you what, Celeste. Um, there's probably some interesting stuff you could pull up in the library. Uh, why don't I ask around and you go start looking around for anything you can scrounge up from the libraries? Libraries? Do they grow on? Do they grow on library bushes? You want some straw? Yeah. You want some strawberries? <laughs> Certainly. Split our forces up in two. That should yeah. be just fine. Um, I have to. Uh, Meanwhile, I shall have to excuse myself momentarily as I need to pee. Be right back. Right. Oh, it's exciting! Uh, who do you think is gonna go with who? I don't know. You guys might also want to go for lunch because it's like past noon and we haven't had anything to eat. I mean, we I have mean, breakfast, but yes. Sure. Uh, hold on. You know what? Honestly, hold on. <laughs> Well, dear, what might you want to have a snack on? He's... Patty shrugs. I don't know. I don't need a whole lot. Um, I'll get back to you on that. Well, I think Celeste could probably use her help more than I could. I'm just talking to some people. Oh. Well, what, what do you think, uh, Dr. Celeste? What would you like to have a snack on? Uh, I think we could go for some... I think we could all do some... Some lunch. It'll be my treat. Well, your treat? Goodness. Uh, just pick one of the, like, regular restaurant cafes. We'll just go to one of the regular restaurant cafes. I'm not too terrible hungry. I think I'll just have a biscuit. I think I know a wonderful place. It's usually where I take my lunch. Sometimes. Patty squints for a second. Oh, you mean cookie. God. What? Oh, Patty squints for a second. Oh, yeah, cookie. Um, The Britishisms. Oh, did you forget about uh, the biscuit and cookie thing? Uh, for a second, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry about it. They make an excellent fish and chips. I remember the <laughs> chips thing. 
Yeah, that's what a that's what American Americans call it fries. French fries. I don't know why they call them French fries either. Weren't they invented in America? Uh, yeah, probably. Hmm. I mean, something that fried, probably southern. I mean, but were, was it a Frenchman? Was it a Frenchman in America? I don't. I'm not sure. Oh. That yeah, would make sound. All right, kind of time right. to Google. Time to Google. French that would make the most. Okay, so if it was made by a Frenchman in America, that would make the most sense. That means it definitely isn't that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, if I, I remember, return. welcome back, dear. Excuse me. If I remember correctly, it. Uh... It's actually a Belgian thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that I have no idea what you're talking about. It was World War One or Americans uh, in Europe during World War One uh, met uh, French-speaking Belgians and confused them for the French. <laughs> Beautiful. Right. Uh, other, other, other places, and this is according to Wikipedia, so don't take this to heart. Other, uh, other information I found is that it. It was invented by street vendors in Pont Neuf Bridge in Paris in 1789, just before the outbreak of the French Revolution. I don't think the French invented cutting a potato into stripes. Just saying. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Bel. I'm gonna go with the Belgian. It's like answer. saying the Earl of Sandwich actually invented putting things between two slices of bread. He didn't invent it. He just monopolized the name. Yeah, fuck yeah. him. <laughs> so we go get anyway. lunch first because it's like afternoon. Oh, um, yeah. I'm taking them to one of my to one of my favorite cafes for lunch. Not to mention listening to, Dr. Uh, to Professor yeah, Richard Graves true. at length will uh, will drain anybody's energy. For crying yeah, out loud, the time. man wrote uh, the man wrote a book for his course, simply named the Monotome. Because it because it contained all of the knowledge that you'd need for his cause. Good. The so mono. I kind of like that actually. That's, that's pretty good. That's pretty funny. That's good. At, at it was also he, two thousand pages long. His own humor. No, it, it, it that was not humorously named. He does not contain humor. <laughs> I'm sure, but it's a descriptive name. Students, good exactly. news. For those of you who do not have the time or the patience to read through the monotome, I've made it into an audiobook. Narrated by me. Yes. <laughs> exactly. The audiobook, the audiobook t literally takes 10 years to complete. And half of it is just filled with him just going, um, um, um. Uh, exactly. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> uh, mm, mm, uh, yes. And the night. So seems somewhat pumped. Uh, especially so, since uh, he also didn't edit out all of the random tangents he went on. No, no. Yeah, all the, uh, no editing. No editor was, was used. Yeah. Oh, God. Uh, it's, it's just like one, one, it's one solid one audio file. It's not edited at all. It's not broken <laughs> up at all. It's like fucking 50 hours long. He tried to hire an editor, but the guy mysteriously vanished. He killed himself. Please. Please, do you think that that man knows how to knows what editing is and what an audiobook is? <laughs> right. So, anyways, uh, we get lunch, and uh, uh, Patty goes off to talk to ask around for somebody who might be able to help him with the standing. And at least Celeste is going for going, going to the library. For the library. The library. The library. Father so. David McDougal is not familiar with these grounds. That is very. I don't know, who else is, I don't know who, who else is helping who, but uh. I mean, what are explore, we? Feel free to explore. What exactly are we trying to do? Mingle around while tests get done. Oh. And You'll need Father time. McDougal to get that to get the tests done, but he has no idea what to do in the meantime because he has no idea where things are. So, Why in other words, see? you're Why going to look the science the... department to get uh, to get uh, the yeah. entire. Uh, the, uh, you're going to the science department to get the little necklace tested for yeah. whatever they can find. Surely, okay? basically, yeah. Um, surely oh, there is a surely there is a campus information kiosk somewhere, or at least a a big map that shows you where you are. 
Patty yeah, like pulls down. So. Uh, Wait, Patty will. I'm sorry. Jonah is actually not an idiot. He will pull out his phone and Google a map of uh, the campus. Well, luckily, I provided one for you. In my head. Anyway. Uh. In that case, you make your way to the uh, to the science department, where you find a lot of uh, teachers that you haven't ever seen before, and a lot of students with very thick glasses. Which we also haven't seen before. Whom you have also not ever seen before. So who is going where? Uh, I'm going to the library. I was going to I was going to, to give everybody else basically a chance to just explore, go to whatever lectures they wanted to go to interesting thing to allow them since they're not enrolled in the campus just campus. show up campus. campus yeah kind of bizarre i mean just no, show I'm... up like sup bitches yep. do i go here no <laughs> get out <laughs> miss me with that nerd shit <laughs> i mean who is, who university is... in uh, university in england as it is in america is very very expensive well sometimes they have like the like public lectures that just like anyone can come and go to mm, probably not at cambridge they do not Pro not at cambridge not. so they do have a starbucks though hell yeah Patty. let's go to starbucks <laughs> i will immediately oh, go God, to starbucks. The people the starbucks not again um I Full disclosure, I don't know if Cambridge actually has a Starbucks on Canva uh, on Can. Uh, on they campus. probably they probably do. Uh, exactly. I'm going off of my own experiences with universities because mine did. I have a small campus and we have two. Yeah. We have three. They probably have at least one. They mine do. had mine had three. So Patty, um to assist her abilities to uh, communicate effectively and obtain directions while uh, stop by a bathroom, uh, pull down her shirt to tighten it a little, checks her makeup, and uh, asks very nicely, um, preferably the person with the, the closest guy with the thickest glasses. <laughs> That's just terrible in so many ways. A little bit. You go up to the closest guy with the thickest glasses. And Ash, uh, and Ash, how do you introduce yourself? What do you say? Hi! Uh, I'm a little lost. Could I was hoping that you you look pretty smart. Could you help me with uh, finding my way around real quick? He looks at you, hearing the alien sound of a female in the nature's department. <laughs> Come <laughs> on! Especially a female with an American does... accent. And then he does a double take. His glasses nearly slide off of his nose. He hurriedly pushes them back with his little finger. Oh, She's oh. American. Oh, uh, sure. Uh, what, what do you, uh, what, what exactly do you need? Why don't you just use Google, you, you bimbo? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Come now. Uh, I'm just looking for a couple professors. I have a couple names here. If you could just help. Uh, I just need a few directions, is all. Uh, abs absol uh, absolutely. Uh, it's uh, it's it's a pretty big can uh, campus, but I can absolutely show uh, show you around if you uh, if you want. Please, that would be wonderful. I need to cut this <laughs> left real quick. I need to go help my grandmother with something. Uh, okay, buddy. I was I was half expecting you to use the Newton voice. <laughs> No, that would be if it was an old professor. Has anybody here seen it? 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 Okay. <laughs> okay. Did she say? She, uh, did she say she had to go? Yeah. Oh. Uh, she said. I think in the terms of she'll be right back. Oh, okay. Okay. 
Would you like to see a whippity whip whip whip? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Please give to me. Allow me to see with my eyeballs. I mean, how else would you see? You don't want to know. With your feelers? If you have to ask, you don't want the answer. <laughs> oh, I love the janked up hand and the, the, the collars. That's good shit. That's good shit. Huh? Can you share with the class? There's good not shit. enough to go around. It's good shit. It's a digital oh, copy. <laughs> and the nail polish. That's cute. Okay. I'm gonna get myself some food. NPC Newton Leaf in the botanical department. <laughs> anyway, Raymond. Yep. In the meantime, we'll just. Go to the nearest Starbucks and uh, I don't know, enjoy the free Wi Fi. Yep. Oh, they, do indeed. Miss, they do indeed misspell your name. They put in they put a D at the end of it. Chef eh. Shafterd. No, Raymond. <laughs> Raymond. <laughs> what do you mean by Draymond? Draymond. <laughs> Draymond. <laughs> Just looking at the cop just says, that says Grayman. Just... Better than home. <laughs> nice. He will also check uh, on the delivery times of all the computer parts he ordered. They say they are underway. <coughs> Excuse me. It occurs to Raymond he could have just told Miguel to drive into the nearest city and buy a computer there and bring it back in a car. Exactly. Now you have gotten a small sense of exactly how small the country you're in is. No, I have not. Well, like I said, a small sense. No, I refuse to learn. It took you learn. less than an hour to get to, from the country to the city. <laughs> I refuse to learn. Also, I don't think that hour is accurate. <laughs> I said less than an hour. <laughs> I think that's even less accurate. Damn it. This is the part we would cut out of the recording if we were like professionally edited. Oh fuck that! Yeah, we I know how that. to. I know how to edit, but I don't have the program for it. And also, fuck you guys. I don't care. Yeah. Enough. What, is, do, Jonah, what is Jonah? Uh, it, yeah. What is Jonah doing in this institute of learning that he could never attend in a million fucking years? Yeah, I want to know too. Yeah, that's kind of. I'm not sure in that he doesn't have time to put up with this nerd shit. <laughs> there is a music department. Yeah, but they're probably all uh, uptight and stuffy about it. You're not wrong. They're, they're only playing classical electric guitar. Mm -hmm. God damn it. <laughs> uh... So he's probably just. Ah, oh, fuck! It probably also also went to uh, Starbucks. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> they also get your name wrong. It's it 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 says Jane. Ah. Uh... Could have been worse. Also, just saying, the electric guitar is almost a hundred years old. Huh. Eighty-nine, actually. I didn't know that. Invented in 1932. Hmm. There you go, then. Anyway, when Jonah gets there, uh, Raymond will try and start a conversation. Mostly just saying how uh, he expected more from such an 
a famous learning institute. <laughs> but this is just kind of... You know, there's a fucking Starbucks here. Come on. He doesn't well, say really fucking. There's a, there's a Starbucks every two blocks everywhere. Well, maybe I expected too much from Wee Little England. Hmm. <laughs> you said... Oh, shut your... Or shut up. So very close to making a student just say, what else do you expect us to run on? And then just fucking walk away with like three coffees, which which he's sipping out of all of them. <laughs> just like connected straws. Yep. He's an engineer student. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. As someone who was an engineering student, that's how it works. Yep. <laughs> Can't you just get one really big coffee? They don't sell them uh, as big as I need them. Big, big All you need to do is bring your own bucket and they can fill it up. Hell, write hey, your own so name on it. How much would it be to fill this? Uh, or, hey, so how much would it be to fill uh, one of the large cups with, es or with espresso? <laughs> okay. Oh, you mean the engineer special? Okay, quintuple that. Here's a bucket. Yeah, I'll take four. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're probably surprisingly lenient in what you can uh, in what you can get there, what I'm, you can get them to make for you there, because students. I'm pretty sure they only care about money anyway. Well, it's run by well, it's uh, it's students being employed there. It's like what they do to afford shit. But that's actually, no, that's very, very not true. That's how it is in Denmark. It's not how it is in England. There they get by on old money, so the ones working at the Starbucks are the ones who can never actually afford to get into the university. Yeah, I wanted to say Cambridge students probably don't work at Starbucks. They really don't. Yeah. I keep, God, I keep forgetting the immense class disparity going on in England. Yeah, because I time. don't think they'll be uh, slumming it that much. <laughs> nope. Although, uh, my sister does have a friend who, honestly, I admire just the amount of balls she has. She <coughs> is old money, uh, but she refuses to coast off of the, um, uh, off of the, the allowance the, uh, that her, her parents give her. She also doesn't want to live in the apartment that they bought her because, well, she feels, uh, she fucking feels like she doesn't have any control of her own life. So she works as a cashier and work uh, and lives off of the money that she herself um, earns, and I can fucking respect that. Yeah, it's Ooh. nice. Plus, you always have a safety net. Next, well, yeah, which makes it even true. better. But she doesn't want to use that safety net. That's the thing. Well, you never want to use a safety net, surely. It's just nice to have one. I, well, she doesn't really think that. Like a safety net is there for emergencies when you, you know, fall from the the balance in line, basically. Well, yes, but that's if you if you view it as a safety net and not just a guilt cage. Maybe. Listen, I think all of us here would like that allowance. Yeah. Yes, all of us yeah. here would love that allowance. Yeah. All of us can agree that it would honestly be really fucking cool if we could just have a citizen a wage. A money. I'd love no, to. A, like a citizen, uh, like a citizen's wage. Like you just get paid for uh, being UBI? a citizen. Yeah. It's called UBI, basically. Oh, that's what it's called. I have no idea. Universal basic income. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, we'd all love that. Sounds like socialism. Exactly. Hello, I'm Danish. Yeah, Shaking that's there. why it sounds dope. Should we just exactly? Just, should we just skip a bit and to see what Father David does? Honestly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what I want to hear. Back. Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear about Father David. Why? Because. Because I love him. 
exactly. He's just like walking slightly uncertainly around the premises because I feel like he was left alone. Oh yeah, we would we would have left your ass behind immediately. Yeah. <laughs> like he got distracted by like uh, like paintings in the hallways from like the art students, and he got like this. Mm. And then he looked around and like nobody was there. Oh, what here? Oh. He looks around. The students rushing to and fro, many of them holding many cups of coffee. He tries to stay out of the way. I mean, there should be. As you, as you stick to uh, to the uh, to the side of the hallway. And just stand there and look around. Someone slows down their rushed pace and gives you an odd look. Are you lost or something? Oh, hello. A uh, little bit. The young man with a bunch of canvases underneath his arm and a coffee in the other hand steps over to you. Do you need some? Do you need some help? Uh, I could show you to the uh, to the entrance. Uh, are you waiting for someone? I'm. Uh, I am looking for my friends. Uh, they appear to have disappeared while I was looking at the art on the uh, the hallway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, don't look too closely at that one. You'll just start getting vertigo. Uh, where did you see them? Uh, what? That's a silly question. Sorry about that. Right. Um, who are your friends again? Are they well, students here? Professors? Well, there's Dr. Celeste Blanc, and oh. the oh. others don't really go here. Well, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Leblanc. I could show you to her uh, to her office if uh, if you want. It's uh, it's 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 a bit of a walk away though. It's uh, I mean we're in the in the arts department. Ah, uh, well I'd hate to impede on your time. No, no, it's it's okay. It's it's not it's not it's not it's not really a bother. I'm like five steps away from saying, you're not supposed to wander off when you're lost. You're supposed to stay in place. You will not take me to a Aww. secondary location. You will not take me to no secondary location, <laughs> youngster. <laughs> It'd be right polite of you and kind of you to do that. Though I'm not sure if they'll be back or not. Which is a bit of a pickle because uh, I think one of them needs what I have. Hello. Have you tried their phones? No. I haven't. He like reaches up the hand and like just kind of holds it against the lower part of his face. Oh. His oh, cheeks uh, are a little bit redder than before. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> I can't forget I have it too sometimes. Why don't you try and call them? That would be a right proper idea. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> just, like his, the flesh is reaching the tips of his ears. He is so embarrassed. Oh, you poor man. <laughs> and he just really what, pulls out his phone. What, what did I miss? Father Dave got abandoned and the uh, student is trying to help him. I mean, we wouldn't have abandoned him. Oh, no, we did. He was abandoned. Yeah, yeah he calls... Yeah, um, we did. Yeah, he calls Plotlonk. Yes, hello. This is Professor LeBlanc. Ah, oh, uh, Dr. LeBlanc, where are you? <laughs> I'm in the library. Where are you? I'm in the hallway with a, a lot of the, the wonderful art that the students here have been making. I'm assuming that's the art department. Yes, yes it is. <laughs> Hold on, Father. I'll come and get you. Uh, Thank just you. Waiting, I'm just waiting for the PA announcement. There's a lost <laughs> priest near the information <laughs> kiosk. So 
Sorry, this is my if, lost priest. If he Go isn't, find your own. If he isn't claimed by the end of the day, he will be destroyed. <laughs> he will be taken in and placed underneath the university. <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. LeBlanc. He will become one with the uh, foundation that supports this glorious university. Yeah. <laughs> and he hangs up Dark. and he looks at the student. Oh, uh, do you have a name? Oh, uh, you can just call me Danny. It's all right. Thank you very kindly, Jamie, for uh, reminding me about my phone. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Uh, I'll just I'll just be off then. I'll, do, do you want me to hang around until LeBlanc shows up? And shows up? Well, I suppose so. I wouldn't want her to get lost looking for me now. I Jamie gives, uh, gives a bemused little smile, showing dimples. In his freckled cheeks. Freckle time. To... Freckle time. She does oh, tend yeah. to. Yeah, she does tend to drag her feet a little bit sometimes. What does I she guess... now? I think she gets distracted on uh, just a little too easily, if you know what I mean. Well, I know quite a few uh, folks like that back down at home. Very distracted. It's all right. They always find their way in the end. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, one can hope. And those who don't, well, I guess they end up uh, doing art, he says with a small cheeky grin. Oh, do you mind if I take a peek at what, you are, uh, what you're what doing there? Oh, uh, it's 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 just in the sketch stage right now. It's, it's not finished at all. Yeah, why would that matter? Yeah, uh, <laughs> well, uh. Well, if you, if you, if you want to, uh, I suppose. I'd love to, uh, but I, I, I wouldn't want to push you into that. It's uh, now it's 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 all right. And he, he hands Father McDougal. Very homoerotic Jesus piece. <laughs> <laughs> Incredible. No, it appears to be a recreation of the, the Mona Lisa. I will hang this in the chapel. Oh, it's not done. What you like I said, at? it's only it's only the sketch face, and well, I, I'm never going to get uh, going to get the smile right. But you know, you got to do what you got to do. But well, you can try at least. Yes, but this this is yours. You did this. I mean, it's just an assignment. Yes, but it's beautiful, even in its sketch phase. You oh. can already see the depth starting to come out. It's, oh, it's wonderful. You have a gift, Jamie. Thank you. you. You, you're really too kind. He reaches out and uh, takes the canvas back, gen uh, gingerly rolling it back into the roll that it was in before. And Father uh, Dan, like gives it back very carefully. Do you, um, do you go to museums often? Like, do you, do you like art, I suppose? Oh, I love art. I've, I've been to, I think, one or two museums in my time, though I haven't had a lot of time to go to much more. Oh, uh, well, in that case, I can hardly recommend pretty much... Every museum around uh, around here, it's it. You'd be cheating yourself out of the experience if you, uh, experiences if you didn't go. And you better hurry up before you know we have to give all the art back to the people that actually made it. Oh, you're finally getting around to doing that, huh? I'm hoping. Well, here's to hoping too. It's not quite right to be stealing now, isn't it? <laughs> Honestly, yeah. Dr. Celeste LeBlanc puttering down the fucking hallways with purpose. <laughs> with purpose. By the way, I'm back. Hi. Hello. Dashing because she's dashing, really just like dashing across the uh, across the open, the, the open way. It's like I can't leave that man alone for too long. 
I Somebody can't else will take him. I can't leave the priest. I can't leave my puppy dog alone for too long. Someone else will take him. <laughs> Someone's going to steal my priest. <laughs> take him home and give him the wrong kibble. <laughs> anyway. He has a very sensitive stomach. God damn it. We, we shall my return priest. to Connor trying to seduce a nerd. Yes. <laughs> Seduction's a bit of a strong word. <laughs> you are a female. You are talking to a nerd. That's seduction enough. This is true. Never mind. I retract my statement. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> so, um... The guy's basically already wrapped around your little finger. Okay. Uh, I make small talk with the guy. I'm I'm very nice because he is actually helping me. Um, <coughs> I asked him about to... some of the. I'm sorry. Uh, he seems to have, uh, to be having a hard time keeping his eyes off of you. <laughs> um, um, I'll ask him about a couple of professors I could go to, specifically ones that could help me get like a chemical analysis test. Um, after he rattles off a few names, uh, I asked him to take me to where I could likely find them. And so he does. He takes you to the science department where you see a lot of nerds and you do hear a little bit of an explosion going off behind the door and then some cheering. Yeah. Moments later that door is opened and that is where you <laughs> you want to go. We killed the, the professor. Anarchy. Anarchy. The oh. Chaos and reigns. <clears throat> the students Mitch? and the professor. <laughs> The students and the, and the professor behind the uh, behind the door are very amiable and eager to help, and they tell you that they will take some um, they will take some samples from the relic that they can analyze, so that they don't you know end up accidentally destroying it. Cool. There's still a faint scent of sulfur in the air. I will um. Yeah. I will worry. I will worry slightly about what I am breathing. Uh, <laughs> thank them politely and leave uh, address and phone number for them. To you should always worry about what you're breathing when you're in a science lab. They say it'll take. I apologize. Uh, they an email address. Take, they say it'll take roughly a day to get the analyzing done, but with their schedules and whatnot, it might take as much as three days. They can't really promise anything at the moment, but they'll be hustling to it. It's more than enough, thank you. They, uh... They wave, uh, they wave you goodbye, basically, and... That's... that's about it. Yeah. I thank the young man who has helped me. <coughs> he still can't keep his eyes off of you, now he's wringing his hands lightly. Uh, evidently trying to figure out whether he should be offering you a hand. Or if he should be bowing, maybe? Or or maybe... <laughs> how do you interact with the women? Whammon? Whammon? Are you, you are whammon? You are whammon? Girl! 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 Lady! <laughs> <laughs> You're making this really hard to keep a straight face. <laughs> That's my intention. Grill. Grill. <laughs> anyway, he. I've had uh, a wonderful day. I thank him for helping me, and then I uh, see if I can find my fucking friends. Yeah. He um. He tells you that uh, that it was nothing, and that at any time, and like uh. As you walk away, he feebly tries to ask if uh, if you want his phone number, but it's very easy to just walk away from that and not hear what he's saying. You want my phone number? Okay, never mind. My name's <laughs> my name's my name's uh, my name's Doug. By the way, do you want my phone number? Patty. <laughs> All right, I was I was gone for the last ten minutes. What did I miss? <laughs> David McDougal being lost and Patty yeah. seducing a nerd. Oh, yeah. not really seducing, just being nice. No, the, the petty found, thing I, I found my lost. Someone found my lost dog. Good. I'm not your dog. Did we find? Did we find our lost priest? I'm an owl. Ooh. Ooh. Patty Dang is on her way to the lost priest, who is currently chatting with one of the art students. Wonderful. 
Uh, Raymond will have taken his second coffee by now, and just is on a on a sightseeing trip of the, this <coughs> supposed superior education facility. So far, he's oh, not. This is a very nice place. So far, he's not impressed. <laughs> Of course he's not. He's American, <laughs> and also Raymond Shafter. We've established yeah, that this is synonymous with dick bag. <laughs> he's not a dick bag. He's an elitist. Exactly. Where did Raymond go? <laughs> yes, Where a dick bag. Same thing. Yeah. Oh, Raymond just is going on a on a tour of the major buildings, I guess, just wandering around. He found, he found himself in one of the. He found himself in one of the campus tours. No, I doubt that. And over here, you'll see students rushing to get their papers turned in on time. Otherwise, they will be kicked out of the uh, of the uh, of the university <laughs> and be forever a shame on their fina- uh, on their families. Family. Families. families. Unless, of families. course, families. Un- I, do, I, I do not study here. Unless, of course, unless, of course, their, yeah. unless, of course, their parents have left. can. Unless, of course, their parents have connections to the current government, in which case they'll be just fine in the private sector. <laughs> anyway, next, <laughs> the next building is. And over to the left, you can see. And to the left, you can see a guy who is just struggling with everything that life is throwing at him, and he's about to break. <laughs> Breakdowns are a normal, natural occurrence in this uh, in uh, in this work-friendly environment. Oh look, there's one now. Uh, just be sure to schedule one ahead of time. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Is uh is Connor Eventually. Break? Well, I'm here. Oh, yeah. good. We're all here. Yeah. Yep. So, you have gotten your tasks done. What do you want to do now? Well, I was in the library looking for information. Well, no, you were on your way to Father uh, to oh, find well, now I'm Father on my David. Way. Now I'm on my way, but I think I went to the library first. <coughs> All right. Um, in that case, let's do that real quick. Uh, what information were you looking for? Uh, uh, any more information on the owners of the house that I can find in the library? Um, honestly, anything that I can find about that particular type of cross. All right. Uh, Road library use. I don't know what I don't know what more information we're gonna find, but you know. Eh, you never know. Remember, you can you always know. you can always ask the rest of us for help. Exactly. Twenty-five. Oh, shit, my brain is not working. It's all right. We don't Patty, expect it to. Is Patty gonna message uh, Father David about the artifact? Uh, twenty-seven. Ooh, one success. Very nice. I was planning on just killing Father David when I saw him. Good luck finding him. (laughs) Sorry. Information about Father Father Prescott. Information about Father Prescott. Uh, If you'll have an excuse for a moment, because one day I will remember to get my notes at the beginning of the session, but today is not the day. It's okay. I mean, I'm pretty sure that'll never happen. It is, not, it is not this day. It is not this day. images. Oh. 
Hi, dumbass. I actually forgot my iPad downstairs. Ooh. Ooh. Now it is here. Now all is good. Ooh. Is all good, though? Ooh. All is good. Ooh. All right. Who let this owl in the library? Ooh. With, a, uh, with an impressive library use of 27, your research does turn up a few names. Hmm. It appears that there were um, there was indeed a man named Prescott in that area uh, around the time uh, around the time. Ah, uh, uh, wait! He didn't even he didn't even um, research. Anyway, there was a man named Prescott in that area <clears throat> in the eighteen uh, hundreds. It appears that he uh, had set up some um, some missionary work, helping uh, helping the poor. So you know, very standard, good priest. Nope. Very standard, uh, noble priestly things. Exactly, standard noble priestly things. Although you don't find out too much more about it. I see. Although, well, you do find out one thing. You find out his first name. Joseph Prescott. Hmm. Ooh. That's the name. That's the name he said with his mouth. Yes. No. Indeed. Who Father, did? you're so... Father Joseph Prescott? Indeed. Oh, the ghost? Yep. Oh. So, and now... Ghost. To branch Isn't out with that like information. Me. I'll have to talk with the local... Whoever handles local history in that area. You'll probably <laughs> want the, uh, the church registry. Probably. That way you can at least get, like, an actual, uh, firm year on this guy. Yep. But for now, a name is enough, and any extra information that they have, I'll take. Well, they do have, um, they have a date of death. Um, do they have a cause of death? No. All it says is uh, died under the good gaze of the Lord in 1857. Probably polio or something. Well, it's yeah, a start. Probably. It's a start. And then I'm assuming I'll get the call about Father McDougal. Yes. I'll get the call about my lost owl in the art department. Exactly. Ooh. And just uh, make uh, quickly climb down, uh, quickly, quickly go from the library to the art department. <laughs> Shout a whoo, whoo. See Are you making fun of back. me? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but yeah, no, I'm just headed to the art department. It doesn't take to, uh, take you too long to spot Father David McDougal in uh, engaged in rapt conversation with this young art department student. Uh, would I know Jamie from any of the from any of my classes? Well, yes, you would. You'd um, you'd also know him as uh, Young Lord James. Ah, young Lord James. Ooh. Oh, uh, there you are, uh, Dr. Celeste. Uh, I, uh, I do suppose this is your associate? 
Uh, yes, this is my priest. Oh, heavens. I had no idea you were a young lord. So now you'd become religious all of a sudden. Oh, uh, what the I don't really like to just, you know, brag about it. Well, that's fair enough. Anyway, uh, I, I really need to get going to my classes and whatnot. Uh, cheerio, Celeste. Uh, Don't forget about Father the paper McDougal. that's due on Friday. And also, keep up with the artwork. You're really good at it. Thank you, Dr. Celeste. Best of luck, Jamie. Thank you for sharing. And Father David McDougal smiles at Jamie. Jamie gives him a little lopsided grin and waves at him as he uh, hurries off to the rest of his classes. Who are his parents? Uh, Lord and Lady, insert very fancy name here. Lord ah, yes, Lady the insert Felfair. very fancy names. Lord and Lady Felfair. <laughs> <laughs> uh, dun, dun, dun. I wish. No, they're just very fancy people with lots of money and... Young Lord James their... is here to get a proper, quote unquote, education. I don't know. Are they are they happy about their son being in the art department? Honestly, they'd rather have him uh, taking uh, an education as um, as a lawyer or something like it. But really, why, why would he need that? He's never going to need to work a day in his life. Better to set him on a better to set him on a path to pursue his passions. I just want to draw pretty things, my pa. Mm -hmm. Anyway, exactly. I just want to draw boobs. <laughs> Please let me draw boobs. <laughs> let me just draw this mural. I just need the titties. Let me just draw this mural God. of my persona on the wall. God, my years as an art student <laughs> struggling to draw the nipple. Oh. <laughs> Be very elusive, nipple. <laughs> anyway, Celeste LeBlanc shows up to collect uh, Father David, and Father David bids a, a nice farewell to Jamie and thanks him for his kindness. And before turning back to uh, LeBlanc, I'm not your priest. I'm, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> you do have a lost puppy quality about you sometimes. No, I don't. I'm a grown man. He says. He says. He says pouting. Uh, Father David McDougal's twenty-seven. Uh, <laughs> barely out of childhood. I wasn't sure how old I thought he was, but yeah. I'm a grown man. <laughs> he says there, holding his breath until everyone agrees. No. <laughs> he's like an he's like an Irish setter in human form. <laughs> More like a golden retriever. <laughs> oh, well, you're all being awfully rude, so I think I'll see myself out. It's fine. I have to go do one of my classes today anyway. Look, Celeste, so the rest of you are free to go whenever you like. <laughs> Celeste is just a bitch. We established that. Only in the morning. But evidently not. She just likes teasing sometimes. Yeah, that's what I mean. Just a look on your classes, uh, Dr. LeBlanc. And I didn't realize you had an interest in art. Oh, well, it's one of my favorite expressions of faith. We'll have to see if we can find a museum later. That would be nice. There's a another field trip. There's we at can least... do another weekly. We can do a weekly field trip. <laughs> no. Oh, that would be fun, don't you think? And he turns to like look at somebody else who would be there, but nobody else is there. <laughs> he just blinks. Uh, well, we'll we'll run it across uh, the others at some point. Speaking of, where did they go? They probably spread out to do their various things. I don't know. Is Jonah busking in one of the coffee shops? Oh, <laughs> uh, he's just kind of hanging out there. <clears throat> I 
Where did my flock of friends go? Oh. The comforting weight of your phone weighs down in, uh, in your pocket. Your uh, in <laughs> a, yeah, you could just call us. Or in an example of incredibly convenient timing, uh, you all will receive a text from Jonah. Where did everyone go? <laughs> uh, me and Raymond went to, uh, or me and Raymond went to uh, get some coffee, but he kind of just disappeared on me. As he does sometimes. <laughs> he merged into a traveling group of students. <laughs> oh heavens! Give me a, give me a moment to find where you're at, lad. I'll be right there. Uh, no, no, no! You stay where you are. I will come to you. <laughs> right then. No one should. No one. No one needs to leave, Father. By the way, up. where are you, Father? <laughs> Oh, well, I'm in I'll... the art department hallway, still admiring Great. pieces. Actually, no, 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 no. Jonah calls you Papa. P oh. Pops. <laughs> Pops. Of course you are. Well, he's, he's very old, you know, compared to Jonah. Uh, father seems um, way too... Uh... Palmer? Yeah. Also, we might want to start wrapping this up a little bit, as I do need to get to bed soon. Okay. Yes. No. Well. He so. calls him Papa, apparently. Er, no, Pops. Pops. Papa. Pops. Aww. Yeah, well, he tells him where he's at. Daddy. Uh... In a short while, uh, Jonah will show up. There you are, lad. Yeah. Uh, now, where is everyone else? Haven't the foggiest? Have has anybody? What has anybody else replied to the message that you sent? know where Celeste is. Well, I will let you know that uh, Dr. Celeste LeBlanc is off to do one of her classes and we're free to leave whenever we want. Hmm. Did you put in the message where you are? To me? No, Jonah. I mean... Uh... Father did. Or Madougal did. Well, then Raymond will eventually show up. Coffee still in hand. Looking bored. Patty appears into the room with a flash of light and a burst of divine fire. No. Yeah. Fear not, she says. No. Do oh, not Patty, be afraid. You're an absolute angel, dear. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Patty. <laughs> and I'm sorry, Chicken. Did they uh, take samples from the thing, or did they take the entire crucifix? They took sa uh, samples from it. Right. Just little, you know, Q-tips that they swapped on it. Gotcha. And they will be analyzing that shit. Anyway, um, you got what you came for. Are you guys uh, ready to go back home? Yeah. About ready to head back? What about you? I think so. Yeah, yeah. I can go home. Uh, oh, by the way, by the way, David, this is yours. Hand the cross back. He blinks. And takes it carefully. Thank you. He looks a bit startled. He had no idea when he took it. I don't remember either. You just fucking pickpocketed. I'll just take that shit. I'll just take this. Wait, which of us had the cross? I think you kind of ever do in it. How about we go back to the bus station and mosey on home? 
Sounds about right. Yeah. Onward. I assume they all jazz or size out of there. They do indeed. Please, we have specific classes for jazzercising. Got my doubts, but all right. At a nice, brisk jog. <laughs> you all get the, uh, get the bus to the train station. You take the train back home. As Raymond takes his pills. <laughs> Raymond doesn't and take pills. Soon enough, you are... Probably should. <laughs> you are back at Hellfair Manor after a nice little outing in the, uh, in the, in the city. It took off the majority... Uh, it took the majority of the, uh, of the day, really. So it already started to get a little, a little chilly with the, with the first hints of evening when you reach home. And as you step up to the manor, I would like all of you to roll a spot hidden. Okay. Uh, that doesn't make it or not. I make it! Yay! Ooh! Remember to That's mark that negative your sheet. Alright, yeah. Mark. And that was the... No, I didn't... Make... Oh, wait, no, I hit that history roll. Ooh! There we go. Ooh. Uh, no. Oh. oh, damn it. I make it. Father David McDougall makes it. Um, would this be would would I also be a part of this, or am I still at college? You're still at uh, at the university. Got it. But you did had you did use your history thingy, didn't you? And library yeah, I use. Use your history thingy. So I yeah, use library use. I don't think I use history. Eh. Well, remember to check it off anyway. <laughs> Either way, uh, for all of you who return home, um, the ones who pass this check. Meaning Father David McDougall, you will notice that one of the windows is open. Oh dear. Ooh. Which window? It's one of the windows in the kitchen. Hmm. Huh. Father David goes over to it. Yeah, same. Well, he enters the um the, the house and goes to the window. Are oh, you going from the in? Okay, then I'm going in from the outside. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, you don't even well, get to the window before you notice why it's open. You manage to get inside of the kitchen door when you notice something. What do I notice? Miguel's dead. It's again. Oh, aren't you a grand beauty? There is a. Large, very fluffy, dirty old cat sitting on the counter, greedily eating as much of the cat food as it possibly can fit inside of its very wide maw. Oh, goodness. It's managed to get into the bag. Goodness gracious. Goodness gracious, oh. you poor thing, you must be starved half to death. <laughs> Uh, when Jonah gets there, he'll crouch down a bit. Psst, psst. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Psst, 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 psst. The kitty, kitty, kitty does not even pay you a single mind. Yeah. Um, it gives no fucks to you. Raymond will just look in from the outside. Not really, honestly, not being interested in the cat at all. Raymond, look at, look at this beautiful boy. I think it's a boy. It's Jonah hard to will... tell, but from the size of it, you'd wager that it's a boy. Yeah, Raymond, no. Oh, what a Raymond, handsome man. It looks rather mangy a, and homeless. Here's a full body image of it. Yeah. No. Oh, oh, time to look, yeah. time to look, time to look. Uh, look at the cat. Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, I yeah. love him so much. No, Raymond will take one look from outside. It looks rather mangy and homeless to me. And also adorable. We should shoo it away. There's something we should fix. <laughs> poor, poor lad. Look at you all beat up. You must be a tough one indeed. Patty, we found him. 
That is a chunk. Oh, it that is a cat. <clears throat> All right. It looks like yeah, Celeste and I are both wrong. You can very, very audibly hear it chewing as it uh, as it takes another an, uh, another like c construction worker shovelful of food into its mouth and chomps and chews. And Father David reaches for the bag. Yes, put it, it has in the bag. a very distinct tear and claw mark in it. He, he holds it so, like, food doesn't spill out everywhere, but he does, like, pour more into the bowl. The cat immediately jumps off of the counter and down to the bowl where it continues to eat. He, he puts the bag back, uh, sitting it so no, no more food spills out, and he does kind of crouch down and, uh, like, reach out a hand. Not, not close enough to the food to be, like, encroaching upon the feast. Yeah. <laughs> but enough to let the cat kind of, you know, notice and sniff at him. The cat only pauses for a moment as it sits hunched up on the, uh, on the kitchen floor and stares at Father David McDougall's hand before it, it promptly continues eating. Oh, poor hungry deer. What do you think we should name them? So I imagine, uh, this is how the cat's eating? <laughs> yep, that's exactly it. Hungry boy. Hungry boy. Except its mouth is bigger. It's like one of those, one of those toy, like, <laughs> shovel things. Oh, whatever. Exactly. Hungry, yeah. hungry cat. Anyway, we should name it. You know what? We should name it Grebo. Uh, right. <laughs> might you reach in and uh, close the window a bit? Wait, did you tell me? Yeah, Is, Raymond. Can I close the window from the outside? I mean, it's a little bit hard. It's easier to, you know, close it from the inside. But yeah, I, I will try. I will try and reach in to close the window from the outside, even though it has no handle. <laughs> All right. I like to see you suffer. That's why I asked. What? <laughs> <laughs> he would not. God, he would not. There is no uh, God, and I will prove it to you tomorrow. <laughs> um, he does. Uh, does Raymond manage to close the window a little I, bit? I don't know. Maybe. Well, maybe a little bit, but I don't think I can close it fully. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, he manages to get it like Jimmy to close, but it's not locked. All right. Uh, Jonah will also try petting the cat slowly. The cat is just all about the food. Getting up on the cat. Flinch away from the petting, but it doesn't like lean into it either. My father David sits beside the cat while it eats. He looks happy as a clam. Hang on, hang on, let me, let me just, let me just, uh... <laughs> well, um, Raymond will, like I said, try and close the window, make it, like, like, jimmy it up, and then also go inside at the, uh, kitchen. I'm just gonna go through that window. <laughs> but, yeah. Well, Shortcut. Well, well, Why not? Uh, Knock Patty out of the way. <laughs> I want to see a cat do. No. There's a kitty. No, he's not. He's not interested in a cat. He's just going inside. Well, uh. Do you want to keep this animal? Of course. That's... Poor dear. Probably so for an outside. Look at all these scratches and scores on him. Looks like he it looks can take. Like... Looks like he's been the one. Oh, he's a tough guy. Looks ain't like he? It, it can take care of itself. Clearly. <laughs> it looks like he's been the one winning. <laughs> yeah. Have you been a, a good guy. winner? <laughs> Are you winning, cat? The cat 
um, finishes up, uh, up the food, licks its uh, its maw, looks up uh, looks up at Father David McDougal and Jonah. A little bit of the whites showing in its eyes before it gets Aww. up and starts walking towards the, uh, the window. No, no, no! Close the window. It's closed. It's the, the window was closed. Okay. It like jumps that. up and starts pulling at it. Oh, he might want to go back outside. He probably has a family. <sighs> he starts pulling more intently at it. Okay, okay. As you long should. as you promise to be safe. And you he like wags a finger at the cat very gently. And come back you... sometime. You should we totally you. you should totally try and pick that cat up. <laughs> no, he waggles a finger very lightly at the cat. The cat and, is the uh, size of Father David McDougal's torso. He, he oh, does this is a large cat. Lord. Give it a little pet on the rump before opening the window. The cat does lower itself when Father uh, David McDougal reaches out and touches it, but as the window opens, it jumps out, tail in the air, and starts padding happily away. <sighs> I miss him already. Me too. I'm glad Father he's gone. David wipes away a little tear. I'm glad he's, <laughs> glad he's gone. I hope he never returns. He, uh, he goes over and he takes the ripped bag pours more food into the bowl, and then goes and scrummages around the, the uh, drawers for tape. Right. We, <laughs> clear, we clearly need to secure those windows better. Any hoodlum Man. can come in. Lifting the bag, you notice that the cat nearly emptied half of it. Goodness! We're gonna have to go back down to the shop soon. Yeah, apparently he was hungry. Yeah. I don't blame him. He's gone several days without eating any food at all. How would you know? Poor thing. We checked. You checked the wildlife? We checked the food bowl. You know, he... It, it might just not have been eating from the food bowl. Yeah. It might be a feral cat. Mother David blinks. Yeah, but he's that, my new friend. It might be possible, <laughs> maybe. Father Dougal is in his head like, but... Cat go in house. <laughs> <laughs> Cats are we house beasties. You don't leave them outside to fend for themselves. But what a cat eat if not cat food? It's in the name. Yeah, cat eat cat food. <laughs> oh please, I'm not that. I'm not that daft. Aww. <laughs> Just sometimes it takes me a moment. Not to you. Still, I hope he comes back sometime soon. He was an awfully good snuggle. <gasps> what should he like? Tur he whips himself around, looking excitedly at Raymond, Jonah, and Patty. His eyes just a glitter. <laughs> what do you think we should name him? <laughs> Grebo. Uh, Freebo. No, Grebo. Grebo. What? It's a Discworld thing. Oh. <laughs> Grivo is a large, semi-feral male cat in Lancre. <laughs> he's so old and he's so strong that he takes on wolves. And he's basically just made out of scars at this point. Jesus. <laughs> Same. Grivo, like the Discworld cat? Yep. Discworld? <laughs> oh, what's a Discworld? I look to Patty. Like, I read books. Like, <laughs> I'm <nerd>. surprised. <laughs> I don't know what a Grebo is. Uh, it's a cat from a series of fantasy novels. Um, looks a lot like that one. Oh, well. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Feels like it fits. I was thinking something like Peter. <laughs> Seems a little bit like the same lackluster in the name of uh, compared to Grebo. I was thinking Saint Peter, because no, no, look at this feral cat with lots of scars. Yeah, <laughs> Saint I, Peter I think, guards the gates of heaven. I think we saint. He's always saint. He is. 
And also someone who could kick me arse if I uh, if I was about to enter a place that they that he was guarding. Saint Peter. Exactly. Saint Peter, famously known for roaming around neighborhoods and just fighting other <laughs> other saints. <laughs> Disciples would kick would kick ass. Also for just eating other people out of house and home. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Not necessarily, but the Bible mentions don't, don't it. Don't say that around Father David. He will give you a stern look. Um, <laughs> I, I guess Grebo outweighs the vote for Peter, so Grebo. Raymond looks looks Grebo. Raymond looks quite pleased because finally some culture in this house. Uh, is is it is it decided then that we're going to name this darling boy Grebo? I can tell you don't like the name Grebo, and that's all right. Very confused <laughs> about the name. Name him, call him whatever you want. I'm sure he will answer to multiple names or not answer at all. I don't think he will answer to the name at all. <laughs> Thank you, ghost to Dr. LeBlanc. <laughs> <laughs> oh Do you believe in ghosts now, Patty? <laughs> She's just on the phone. She's just on the phone. He does no, I got her in a uh... Zoom call, bitch. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. COVID never happened in this timeline, so way. Zoom isn't a thing. <laughs> yeah, no I, one knows. I didn't Zoom. get to say that Father right. David took a picture of the cat. Aww. He took a picture of the cat, and he'll send it to Doctor LeBlanc with the with the caption: "We found him!" and lots and lots and lots of exclamation <laughs> points, and one like little semicolon, and a smiley face, like a capitalized D. <laughs> you managed, he's, he's you managed to get a. Emojis. You managed to get a, a, a snap of him mid chomp. Cat behind a building with he has risen. <laughs> <laughs> he has risen. I'll text Patty. I'll just text Patty. Shit, you're right. It wasn't a raccoon. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, wait, wait. We looks, should name him raccoon. Looks like an no, eight one though. We will not name a raccoon. What I'm we'll changing my rocket. vote to raccoon. Then what will we name the raccoon? <laughs> Cat. Yeah. Where does it end? Yeah. Where It'll does it end, great. Shona? Where does it end? Wait. Sure. No, 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 no. When we find a raccoon, we name it Badger. So that way, when we find a badger, <laughs> we can name it Cat. I have an idea. <laughs> oh. We come up with a little list of names, and we'll get everybody together in the kitchen, and we'll take a vote on it. But for now, I feel as if the universe is tiring. I can feel it in me holy bones. <laughs> Holy phone. The father is getting impulses straight <coughs> from God at once more. Yeah. As the universe is indeed tiring, since the oh. universe needs to go fishing tomorrow. Yeah. The entire university needs to go uh, fishing, or you need to go fishing. Anyway. Just the entire universe. At least the one that you, yeah. Yahoo. Uh, we have for. played for three hours. It's fine. Yeah. The father David does lean closer to Juna. How do you favor the picture? Uh, and I'm guessing uh, it's just uh, like the foot or the camera app on his phone. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think you can. But well, that's also me just being stupid. Well, you're not stupid. That's fair enough. Oh uh, no, that's <laughs> me. Uh, never mind. Father David just smiles and looks down at the picture of the cat again. He almost <laughs> looks like he's about to cry. <laughs> this is big, me-looking, wall scarred cat. This is yeah, cool and he's adorable. <laughs> I love him. He looks like he eats souls. He yeah, and oh. I'll feed him mine. <laughs> He looks like he needs a good brushing and a good little bit of cheek scratching, that's right, doesn't he? <laughs> oh, he really does, though. Oh, I want to pet that big beefy boy. You're gonna find out Celeste is actually more of a dog person. Oh, God. This is just the ending to the session, you just fawning over the cat. Yep. Raymond will leave and go to his done. room. <laughs> 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 like, screw you guys, I'm out of here. 
It's gonna go over the yes, table. I, yeah. <laughs> well, I guess that's a goodbye to the listeners then. Mm, it is indeed. Not fucking nerds. And with this, we conclude our session of Filth and Manda Tales with an adorable cat. No better Yay. way to do so. Oh, yeah. Who may or may not be named Grievo. No one is <laughs> sure at this point. He goes Either by way, many names. he big. Guest cover art by Coops. Please tell me your name. <laughs> I'm gonna stop the recording, you then. Say bye. Bye, bye. everybody. Bye. Bye.